Podcast. I'm Ryan Banner here with my two amigos to bring you guys another world famous movie commentary on Solo, a Star Wars story. We've got our movies paused. The Lucasfilm's uh, logo slash emblem is fully up on the screen. And we're going to go around the space ship. Station. Station. Uh, ship. That's, located, st- that's being built on Corellia. <laughs> I, we always right. have to come from a place. It sounded like you'd never seen Star Wars before, and then you said Krillia. And, uh, and I went from, he doesn't know Star Wars, to, wow, what a fucking nerd. Yeah, <laughs> so that's pretty much what I am. Uh, to my right, we have the mayor himself, uh, Jeff Hornacek. Oh, Horns, I got a question for you. Uh, fuck, Mary kill. Chewbacca, Khaleesi, or Thandie Newton? Oh, super easy. Uh, fuck Chewbacca and Mary Khaleesi. So you're going to kill Thandie Newton? No, that's disgusting. I'm not going to murder anybody. But you'd fuck a Wookiee. Move on. Like, just... Okay. Look, I don't, we're not going to stay on me the whole time. I never really get that, because if you marry someone, don't you also fuck them? I don't After know two, how long you've been married, but... Because of God and stuff? I think you actually stop fucking them, but yeah. that's not that's by, de- by design. I think that's a thing. And to his right... We have Matthew, the Enforcer, F. Geiger. Geiger, um, to be honest All with right. you, I didn't really have a question ready for you. I'm going to be honest so with you. Have you. A... I'm still Quiet. on this whole thing where Jeff would fuck a Wookiee. Figured it'd throw us off pace a little bit. Start this bitch. The yeah. Emperor might make an appearance later if you're a fan of our Star Wars commentaries. No. No. <laughs> All right, again, we have the movies pause at the Lucasfilms logo. It's fully up on the screen. We're going to hit play in three, two, one. A Star Wars story. May the Force be with you. The Force isn't even in this thing. A long, long time ago. It's only a long time ago. Didn't it used to be two longs? Mm. Do you guys like how instead of the scroll, they kind of do this? uh, Okay. In a lawless time, so Trump's in office. It's such it's so cheating. They're like, yeah, we did. You see how we didn't do the fucking scroll? We're like, yeah, but you still gave us like prologue with text. Yeah. It was different. It's not a scroll though. Here's the thing. Such- I get they had to do it, and I get that, but I didn't even want this movie to begin with. So I don't think they have to do this. They all all this stuff they just quote unquote explain to us. They show us in the first fifteen minutes. It was, it was such an over the pants hand job that I'm like, are you gonna play the music or what? I'm like, okay, I guess not. Yeah, soon I'm gonna get a. I gotta take this thing off, guys. It's so fucking hot. I've only, yeah, for those of you that can't see us, which is everyone except for us three, uh, Banner's wearing a shark suit. We don't really know why. And now he has an old, like, Angels in the Outfield California Angels shirt on. Well, I do love. Throughout. I love seeing the Star Destroyers. That's pretty fucking cool. If I remember this right, and I'm sorry, I've only seen this once in theaters but the first scene didn't have to be a good scene it has to set a tone and this one kind of sets a tone right off i believe oh hell yeah uh i don't know who someone's volume's really loud and also banner shirts off so you know the pot has started All right. i had hey, my he first has dice by the way so go buy them here comes my first horns fun fact of the day brought to you by zima Han's dice are identical to those used in The Last Jedi, and there are 25 pairs of the iconic gold dice that hang in the Millennium Falcon used by the props department. Three of those were made by Tiffany & Co. Banner, I know you love the dice. Dice are fucking stupid. Don't say that. Okay, they're stupid. damn it. (laughs) What? I think they're dumb. I don't like the dice. I hate the dice. They're unnecessary. Do you? Th- how many people in this little cabin do you think are on death sticks right now? Or basalts? It's a long, long time ago, so it'd be basalts. <laughs> Our- yeah, way back to 2016. <laughs> what would what would fuck you up worse, death sticks or bath salts? I don't know. I, don't know. I think it's a wash. That sounds like a bro four squad pod. Uh- <laughs> that's a B- that's a bro v bro. Should we do a? a- Movie madness, the the movie drugs, made up movie drugs, which are the strongest. Be awesome. I feel like the ecstasy in Bad Boys 2 has to be considered in this. It's up there. So what is this? 
what's this vape pen that they're trying to sell? It is the um, what's the fucking thing they go the to the coaxium? spice? The, the coaxium, yeah. Remember yeah. where like a, a drop of it can basically like fuck you up, and by you up, I mean like a planet. So like it is death sticks, just in yeah. liquid form, or anthrax or something. This is great because this is classic Han. Every time he gets caught, he's like, I was actually just about to go see the yeah. person you're trying to take me to. Yeah. I don't have my money now, but I was just going to tell him I'm going to get it. So. I'm carrying my wallet with me. We're on Corellia. Jesus Christ. You know how dangerous these streets are? Did you guys like him as Han? Not only did he not annoy me, I... You cut out, Yeah, you're, you're cutting out, So I'll, I'll fill in. Oh, sorry. I, uh, I really liked Alden Ironreich in this movie. I never saw him as Han Solo, though. I just I liked his character, but I was never like, oh, that's young Han Solo. This worm lady looks exactly like the woman who used to work at the laundromat near my house. It's also played by Rachel, if I'm not mistaken. My ex-wife? Yeah. God, she still got it, doesn't she? Um, she's like, she's like when you go on a Tinder date and you're like, you're those pictures were taken in high school, weren't they? And you're 31 now, aren't you? It's quite the gang of uh, thugs behind him. Like, not too many good-looking people here. You can see why they turn to a life of crime. That's why dads need to stay in the picture. Yeah, if you have a young daughter, you know, be a part of her life. Otherwise, this is the result. <laughs> How brave is the person who just attacks the guy who like can't fight back is kneeling right. down? That guy always go that guy goes home at the end of the night and yells at his fucking kids for no reason. You think those jobs are on indeed? I'd be great at that. I would too. Need someone to beat mercilessly a uh, person who I've enslaved? I could do that. <laughs> at least three years prior. So the the issue here was that I always wondered, like, in the beginning of the movie, oh, man, when you see weird creatures like this, I like these creatures in the Star Wars universe, but also, like, in moderation, right? We don't want, yeah. like, a ton of this. You don't want this to be a main character. Yeah. I think this is hilarious. He's got a fucking rock, but he says it's a thermal detonator, and he says click with his, no with his mouth. Have we ever actually seen a thermal detonator go off in a Star Wars movie? They always just threaten people with it. I don't think so it's like when your parents are like i'll whoop you and you're like you know dad i'm 15 you've never actually hit me yeah this is all stupid. like she i forgot that they like sun like hurts their skin or something yeah, yeah. so what happens when you never leave the house i know they're like canadians did i hate it when people on the internet are like well if sun hurts your skin then why would you have a window in like dude shut the fuck up it's not a window <laughs> Whatever they still the hell need it vitamin yeah. Geiger, um, you keep cutting out. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, Geiger, you're having some We're technical losing. difficulties, but it's fine. Um, I'll Going back to my question earlier with uh, Iron Reich, I always thought this entire movie that he was – he couldn't decide whether he wanted to try and do Han Solo his own way or if he wanted to be a, a uh, Harrison Ford – like try and mimic Harrison Ford. And he couldn't figure it out. And I think that's why he just bugged the shit out of me. But everything else in the movie I really enjoyed so I can overlook his performance. Yeah, and I think the problem with that, like probably why he was caught in the middle, is he's not that much younger than Han is in A New Hope. No. So it's it's not like he can do his – like you can say, oh, well, this is, this guy's 20 years younger than the Han we first met. Like he's not. What's he's, he, like seven maybe, years at most? I was going to say maybe 10 Especially is because right later now. the bulk of the movie happens three years after the events that are going on right now on the screen. Kira's the type of chick, she's like, oh my god, Han, don't. And then as he's running, she's like, how fast can this go? This, oh, this was so fucking stupid, this scene. Yeah, wasn't a fan. Oh, wow, that <laughs> droid got hit. Droid humor to me, I've just, like, R2 occasionally with the, that stuff's kind of funny, but like, 3PO, I've never really laughed at. All the R2 stuff in the prequels, like especially in Revenge of the Sith, was cringeworthy. And that, I can do without. When he started to fly, though, that was like Cycle's funniest thing he's ever done. 
Mm. Yeah, Cycli loves that he can fly. Cycli's rolling over in his grave right now. He's not even dead. This was like a, a nice kind of homage to Jedi. You know, the stormtrooper on the speeder. Banner, you love a good chase scene. We know that. Yeah, this isn't really this isn't really moving the needle for me. What about how they're focusing Mainly on the dice? Mainly because they're shoving these fucking dice down my throat. So uh, my second horns fun fact, director Ron Howard, who I actually don't want to get into the Lord and Miller stuff too much. Everybody knows about it. Like, whatever. They were brought on. They I were replaced. I don't know about it. Please explain it. Okay. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> they directed Google 21. It. They directed 21 Jump Street, and then Lucasfilm was surprised that they were making the movie too comedic, which is my favorite f fucking part of it. Um, that's anyway, a fun fact? That's stupid. No, that's just the truth. Uh, so director Ron Howard was reportedly considered to direct Star Wars Episode One: A Phantom Menace back in 99, but declined the offer, calling the task, quote, too daunting. 18 years later, he accepted the role to direct this film, which I think is only interesting because that shows you how bad Lucas fucked up the prequels, where it was too daunting to take the first movie after the originals. But after the shit that he did with Episode One, Two, and 3, people are like, oh, shit, yeah, I'll take a shot at this. Can't be worse than those. Well, honestly, also... Coming in after Lord and Miller, you're like, look, I can't get any worse than what they did. I wonder what Phantom Menace would have been like with him directing. Good? Yeah. Did you know he's the only Academy Award winning director to direct a Star Wars movie? He, of course, won that Academy Award for Apollo 13, another, I don't, not science fiction, but space, space movie. movie, obviously, yeah. No, it was, we never landed on the moon. It was filmed, look how tough That was filmed in a basement in California, Hollywood. Look how tough these stormtroopers are when there's four of them versus one person that's unarmed. Yeah. This reminds me of the uh, Empire 8th grade dance. We all went to the Empire Middle School, and basically stormtroopers would just beat us fucking senseless the whole time. Awesome. Yeah, it was great. Anytime was you didn't, cool. anytime you were dancing and didn't leave room for the Holy Spirit, they'd walk in and just yeah. beat the shit out of you. Geiger, I know you're a fan of vests. What do you think of his vest right now? Well, vests get pussy before I let him talk. Sorry, continue. I like the vest. I like that it's uh, kind of lighter color. Yeah, it's not it's his vest, on. but it's, it's not a black vest. or brown. Yeah, it's not his vest. It's a vest. Yeah. I like his this golf is... gloves that he has on too. We get with the fucking I dice. Like the dice guys. God. Um, I'm gonna burn through my facts pretty early today, but what's different from this any is... other day? Very yeah. true. Our favorite thing, I think, is always who was up for other roles, right? So I'll start with Kira, who. And this movie is played by Amelia Clark. You mean uh, Khaleesi? My fault, yeah. Oh, so you don't know who that is because you don't watch Game of Thrones. I know who Khaleesi is, though. Who's Mother Khaleesi? Of Mother of Dragons. God damn yeah. it. Got you, bro. Jon Snow's... Check it shows her boobs. Yeah, her and Jon Snow. Got it. Tessa Thompson, Naomi Scott, Zoe Kravitz, and Jessica Henwick um, were all up for the role of Kira. I could really only see Tessa Thompson in the role, mainly because I'm in love with her. She'd be good. She would be good. Because she could play, like, the badass bitch, too. You know, like, she could definitely be running um, the cartel. Who else? I'm sorry. I just started. Once you said Tessa Na Thompson, I just kind of checked out for a second. Naomi Scott, who is Princess Jasmine in the new Aladdin and who was the Pink Ranger in the Power Rangers reboot. I yeah. could have seen her, but she's not God, a good enough actress. I forgot about this. They're shoving that dice down our fucking throat. Like oh, we're either gonna swallow it. it or choke on it. <laughs> one of the two. When I was a kid. <laughs> and then Banner, the last one is Zoe Kravitz, Lenny Kravitz' daughter. Yeah, of course I can't see that. And, I like, like her, her as an actress, but I couldn't see her in this role. Why? Because she's black. No, she's black. I don't see color. I didn't know that. Oh. I just don't. I just don't see her playing this type of back and forth. Playing both sides of the fence the way that Amelia Clark can. The way Han is acting now is like when you're at a party as a freshman in college and the cops come. You're like, I was actually here to fucking study. Also, I'm 40, so you don't even have to, you know, card me at all. Let's not even waste our time with that. Dude, Being a stormtrooper, I mean, it's Han's long happen. hours, but all you got. And their their dental plan works pretty much anywhere. Yeah. In network, it's pretty good. I want, there's a post, I think it's a poster hanging up that says, like, 
And maybe it's when he gets in line and he gives him his name, which I will have to talk about here in a second. But I think it says, like, join the Empire. I really want that in my uh, man cave. Well, here you're seeing some, I don't know, you wouldn't call them posters, those big-ass sashes up on the roof. A little bit of propaganda. All right, as the scene is happening, this is like the scene that we're all, I guess, kind of waiting for. This and when he meets Chewie. Banner, I'll let you go first, as I think the man who most closely resembles Han Solo on the pod. What were your thoughts on how Han got his surname of Solo? I don't like it. I honestly, here's my thing. I didn't want this movie to happen from the beginning. I've been very vocal. I didn't want it to happen. I like the fact that we know nothing about Han's background. I wish they would have left something to my imagination. Even if it's the only thing is his surname. I, I didn't, I literally do not care that. I don't know. I didn't like it. I wish that yeah. we would have been. Like, so his, his last name is cause this old British dude just thought of it as he was typing yeah. it in. Right. That's the backstory now. Awesome. Thanks. Geiger. How about you? I didn't mind it. I mean, he didn't think of it. God damn it. You keep yeah, cutting you're out. Still cutting just... out. What the fuck? Okay. Well, you're back now. All right, okay. the, the, the three years later here, this was like a – this was basically the well, the pitch for Rogue One was like saving Private Ryan in space. They did not disappoint. Th this scene, this is fucking Ron Howard right here, right? This is all Ron Howard. This is when we get introduced to Woody Harrelson, and once we see him, we'll, we'll get everybody's uh, thoughts on him. But I thought this scene – it fits perfectly if you go to a road one. I love the way this was filmed, everything about it. Does anything make you want to say, shut up, more than someone screaming in the middle of a battle, my legs, my legs? I can honestly Sc say I've never been in that situation before. It's like, hey, bro, yelling about him's not going to make him grow back, okay? You don't know that. Have you ever had your legs shut off in a war and you had to grow them back? I withdraw the statement. What's the point of all these goggles if no one's ever going to fucking put them on? Well, it's not sunny out. They're actually sunglasses. Oh, And shit. that dude has them on. I do love the... If you've seen... If you're listening to this commentary, I'm assuming you've seen the movie. You better have. If not, I'm going to spoil it for you. But I do love the reveal here soon where they're not even actually part of the Imperial Army. <laughs> They're like in the fucking war, but they're really just undercover the whole time. Did we do a white man can't jump movie commentary? We did a review on it. No, we did a review. Oh. We should do a commentary. We should though. do a Geiger, commentary. It's a great Geiger, fucking movie. Geiger was the one who got us to go revisit that. I know. I haven't revisited it in probably 20 years. It's a great fucking film. Well, you guys should look out for that for our white man can't jump movie commentary coming out soon. Theater near you. Yeah, and by soon... Are they redoing that, or... They are. Michael B. Jordan is attached. I believe Justin Timberlake was the other role, but okay, I can't... Okay, that's gonna fuck. I'm sorry. Is that is that true, or did we come up with that? We might have come up I with that on I think it's a own. little bit of... It's a little bit of both. Speaking of Michael B. Jordan, let me find my fact here on him. Oh. Uh, Michael B. Jordan was originally attached to portray Lando Calrissian, but scheduling conflicts with his newly acquired role as Eric Killmonger in Black Panther led him to drop out, and the role was given to Donald Glover. I think that's a good choice. By the way, guys, quick departure. I just saw the latest Creed 2 trailer. It Geiger. so Shit. fucking good. I'm fucking back in, dude. Yeah. Let's go. So fucking good. Oh, my God. Because now the premise is he's fighting the son of the guy who killed his dad. Is like the whole angle they're taking. He's like, wow. I'm going to kill you keep cutting out. Yeah. I would love to have a conversation with you yeah. about this. Stuff. But you look beautiful. You do. So this, this guy, is whenever we find out they're not actually part of the Imperial Army, right? Uh, in a little bit, Han like catches them like in like a side huddle. Okay. This guy kind of looks like Jeremy Renner if he smoked a pack of menthols a day for 40 straight years. So it looks like Jeremy Renner in about two years from now? How dare you? By the way, next podcast we do, I watched a movie with Jeremy Renner. I've watched, like, so many fucking movies since our last episode. I don't know when this is coming out. It could be 2018. It could be 2031 when you listen to this, but... Hopefully. Somehow the wig department here made Thandie Newton not look that hot. 
which is kind of impressive. Mm, I don't know, man. Just kind of got, oh, it, I got it going. I, I'm not saying I still wouldn't. Oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, uh, your armor has a bullet hole where your fucking heart is. So how are you alive? <laughs> Guys, I'm I'm not going to lie. Thandie Newton's character, not a huge fan of. No. She references in the scene where the, 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 with the train heist, one of the bounty hunters that Vader brought in, I believe. Is it Empire when he brings them all in? Uh, yes. We'll have to talk about this more at length. I know because I know Geiger has some strong thoughts on this, but this movie coming out in May instead of Christmas. Okay, first off, I don't like it either. I did read this isn't on my list of fun facts, but they released it on so May is 20th. This an, is this an unfun fact? This is an like is it, uncredited fun fact. Is it fact. like a yeah. serious fact? So they were it's not as fun. It's more, yeah, you're right. It mm -hmm. takes itself more seriously. They released the movie on May 25th which um, was the original, obviously not the total date, but the month and day that the first Star Wars came out. But still, mm. two Star Wars movies in six months. I love Star Wars more than anybody, but like, let's chillax. I honestly think that they saw, regardless of what they paid the critics to say, they saw Last Jedi and go, we need to move this up because we got to get that bad taste of Last Jedi out of the people's mouths. And it but wasn't it wasn't it announced then though like way I guess they must have known Last Jedi was dog they, shit yeah then. they they had at least seen early cuts of Last Jedi. God, I almost kind of wish one of the four of us on the pod liked Last Jedi just so we could fucking eviscerate them. And if this is the first time you've listened to us, we're not haters. It pained me so much that I did not like Last Jedi. But I'll say this: Solo very very pleasantly surprised me. Well, I'm. Guys, I'm just saying, if you listen to our two, 2018 um, preview show, is that what we called it? Who said, Something like that. Who said biggest surprise movie was going to be Solo? I don't, yeah. I don't remember. Who said that? I'm pretty I sure know. I said that. Did I say that? Speaking of my ex-wife, Rachel, this is what she used to look like when she'd wake up a morning after drinking, like Chewy right here. The thing is, going into Solo, we had such low expectations that it, like, anything would have been good. But then they gave us a lot of really good stuff. This is one storyline I loved, was Han and Chewie. I thought it was fantastic. Everything about it, top to bottom. So this is the first time someone speaks Wookiee. Yes. And the, the only time Chewbacca ever has subtitles. Not a fan. I agree. I think that the whole, like, the humor is derivative of Han, like, kind of repeating what Chewie says in his, like, rebuttals to him. Yeah. So by putting it up on the screen, it's like, come on, man. And, and again, this is not me like, oh, fuck this movie, because they put up subtitles. That's the thing. I get why they did it. I just didn't like that they did it. Sure, it didn't bother me too much. No. It's the same thing with the opening crawl. They had a crawl, but it wasn't a crawl. I'm not mad that they didn't. I just don't like how they did it. The growl did save his life, though. I will say this. As far as the language goes, again, I'm not really nitpicking. I just think it's kind of funny to talk about. I don't think any of the sound that different to where, like, they're each different words. <laughs> yeah. Right? They're pretty much all they're, the same. They're pretty much the exact same. I feel like it's a lot of chimpanzee eye communication, though. Also, I'll say this. Chewie, again, he's never been the brains of the operation, probably because he's been high as balls for most of the... Dude, he's, this is the most sober we've ever seen him. That's because he's been in jail for the last six months. Right, just because he can't get toilet wine down here in the fucking mud. But this is easily something Chewie could have just done on his fucking own. He could have just punched this pole out and gotten out at any point. I guess he needed, like, the... But those, there's no way those guards are there 24-7, yeah, right? Needed they needed the motivation, I guess, for it. Uh, that's true. Good coaching, you know, Banner, inspires Wookiees to do things they never thought they right. could do. Exactly. They're still chained together, right? So this yeah. is really an analogy for marriage, because this is what it's really like. Yep. And they're having just about as much sex as I did in my marriage. Zero. 
that right there just showed you how much stronger Chewie was than Han. Han went flying. He looked like a like Chewie should have got t- hit for targeting there. Han went well, Banner, flying. You, Banner, you know now who's skipping leg day. Chewie's in there doing the. Uh, is it like? <laughs> does it help during beach season? No, but it pays dividends now. Yeah, for all the times you get trapped in a mud pit jail cell. Which could happen a lot. Twice on Tuesdays. Who who voices this guy? John Favreau, That's Geiger's right. favorite. Damn it, he's not here. He's having technical difficulties. I got to say, though, the Favreau voice, it, I love Favreau as a director. Geiger hates him, which is what makes the pod so great, but... Kind of took me out of it because I, I just kept thinking, that's John Favreau. I know, right? <laughs> and I love his voice, but it's just like I can't see him as anything else. Yeah, a Wookiee w- seeing one is like the version, the epitome of your friend having like a holographic Charizard Pokemon card. That's why Favreau was like, holy fuck, is that a Wookiee? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, though. When Favreau died, I was a little upset. Does that mean Favreau's characters fucked some Wookiees based on what he just said? He's got to have. It was one time, all right? And I was on vacation. And I was drunk, so it didn't even count. I'd be like, oh, well, you don't have to even tell us all that. Yeah, that's you're good. So this ship, uh, I'm not... If you know this at home, maybe comment below. This is an Imperial ship, right? Because I don't think I've ever seen that type of ship. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a spaceship. How big mm. of a dick do you think uh, Chewie has? Are they about to fuck? Shower sex is the easiest because it's easy cleanup. So it, I've never done that because I'm not married. Is Chewie's dick like buried beneath the fur? How do you even? Got that same problem, folks. Ew. Wow, look at this visual. Damn. Geiger, you back with us? I mean, I don't know if I'll cut out. I heard that. We were just uh, we were just talking about how awesome Favreau was in this movie. He might not mind him as an actor, actually. I think he likes yeah, him. Yeah, he, like, he's okay. He just I just hate when he directs Disney films that we've already seen. You liked him in I Love You, Man, right? As the fucking blonde. I like him in a lot of things. I like him in Swingers. He's, he's good in that. That's like his original. That's the OG. Chewy, Chewy with the wind blowing through his fur, like one at a time, ladies. Ladies, I'd fuck him at this point. I get what you were saying at the beginning of the pod. Yeah, it's not that hard to like envision yourself curled up next to him, him feeding you seedless Honestly, grapes. I don't know if he's a fuck. He might be a Mary. Um, you have a blanket everywhere you go. It's true, and you know he'd treat you right for sure. He's always <laughs> opening the door. Uh, Banner, I think you knew this, but in the, um, is it Revenge of the Sith, the fight scene on Kashyyyk with the Wookiees? Yes. So the original script actually called for, I I would assume a much younger Han Solo, but to be in that scene and it was cut at some point. Yes, it was, it was, it was supposed to be Han as like a, I think it was supposed to be like 10 or 12. And basically from what I understand in the original script, Chewie saved him. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so while Woody Harrelson's on screen, I have another fun fact, which, of course, is about our, our favorite uh, topic, which is other people that were close to being cast in the role or were rumored for the role. Uh, Woody Harrelson was picked over Christian Bale as Han's mentor, who actually wanted the role. Again, I Christian think that Bale was a good choice. It? Bale wanted it. By the way, Geiger, I just saw uh, – I was at A Star is Born a few days ago – Saw the trailer for the new movie Vice, which has Christian Bale as Dick Cheney. I was like so-so on it. Adam McKay's directing it. Our boy Sam Rockwell plays George W. Bush in it, and he looks fucking incredible. What's it about? I mean, like true events, I guess, but... Uh, it's about how uh, it's it's done like the big short because Adam McKay did it, so it's like a comedy, but like also kind of sort of political okay it's about basically how george bush was quote unquote the president but dick cheney like orchestrated the whole like war in iraq nice okay and amy adams plays lynn cheney his wife and the the scene is her side boobs hanging out like on a american uh, hustle 
She looks pretty good, but the main scene in the trailer, it's George Bush and Dick Cheney at a barbecue, so it's Sam Rockwell and fucking Christian Bale. And it's like when Bush is like about to run for president, and, he's, and Sam Rockwell, who's so good, is like, hey, man, I want you to be my vice president. And Dick Cheney's like, well, I'll only do it if you let me run foreign affairs, uh, domestic policy, agriculture, business, and all of our military. And he's like, that's it? Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I didn't get that trailer. You went to see A Star is Born? No, but I mean, I should have got it for El Royale, you'd think. Oh, yeah, maybe. By the way, campfire scenes in movies in general, I fucking love. Like, this one's great. I always think of 310 to Yuma as, like, one of the best ones. That's probably why it's got that uh, Western title. Whenever I typed in a solo film, it was, like, Western, romantic, sci-fi, a bunch of shit. Thriller. Yeah, that has weight. That has th that many genres. It sounds like a fucking jumbled up mess. I know. It's something for everyone, so you'll probably like it. I love Woody Harrelson and Thandie Newton, but I do not see them as a couple in any way, shape, or form. Well, then you're racist, sir. Why? What races are they? White and mocha. Which one's white? Again, I don't see color, so just let me know which one's who. So that obviously isn't Har Harrelson's real hair. No. Because he's bald as shit. But You cut out again, but Thandie Newton has fake hair on too. So like both those people in that shot, wig department working overtime. But it's better than what Sony did. For who? For which? For, oh, for him? Oh my for, God. For Harrelson, yeah. Oh, you didn't like the, you didn't like this. Oh yeah, sorry. Spoilers for Venom. Whoops. You didn't like the Sideshow Bob wig? I mean, I... Yeah. Yes. I do love the story how he got his gun. That was great. Again, it's a lot of pressure, like, to show us the Kessel Run, to show us Han meet Lando, to show us how Han gets his name, to show us how he meets Chewie, to show us how he gets his gun. There's a lot of fucking pressure to do all those things. There's no way you can get them all right with all the fans. But for the most part... This stuff worked. I was totally against Lando being in this movie, totally against Donald Glover, totally against the voice before I saw it. And like a fucking idiot, I felt way wrong when I left. Was this somebody's best scene? Probably mine, because I fucking love this scene. Yeah, this this was this was very well done. Any train heist, I've I can't really think off the top of my head of a train heist in a movie that I don't like. And Thank you with those goggles is kind of giving me like a Selena Kyle vibe here. Also, tip of the cap to whoever did the CGI for this. I'm sure they're listening. This is incredible. Yeah, this this scene was probably the best scene in the movie besides the ending scene. Again, yeah, Geiger, to your point, you want to make us feel a Western vibe? Fucking rob a train. Please. I can see why... You can see why what? Why... One more time. Dude, all... All right. Great talk. I uh, didn't realize Favreau's character had four arms until that scene right there. Yeah, that's like what made him a great pilot. And that's why they – part of the reason why they uh, weren't sure about Han being the pilot. This isn't – this is incredible. This is why it's a Western. This is a badass scene, dude. Yeah. Strapping yourself to the train and like rappelling off the side to shoot people is just so fucking G. Also, Chewie with goggles on is a hilarious look. One of the funniest things I've ever seen. Does he have goggles on in um He Empire? wears them one other time. Hoth? When they're on Hoth, does he? I think he yeah, does. Yeah, but it's only when he's like welding shit. I'm pretty sure oh, he's yeah, like that's, fixing that's the right. he's fixing the, the Falcon. God, this is sick, dude. Um Who else was up for the role of Chewie? Uh, good question. Let me look here. It looks like Austin Powers' chest was, uh, as well as Bruce Valanche, and I think this is just to hit the minority quota, but Lucy Liu, it says red. See, I was going to say, at one point, I'm pretty sure Lindsay Lohan was attached to the project as well. Mm-hmm. 
But she just couldn't get clean. Does he have four feet also? No, I think he just has two feet. Is he? I don't know what the phrase is. You're a zoologist, so you might know. But does he have the thing where, like, you your feet basically have opposable toes, kind of like your hands? Yeah, it's called a monkey, Jeff. That's the phrase. It's called monkey. Yeah, monkeys have that. I know monkeys have it. That's not the term. Opposable thumbs? No, opposable toes. Isn't there like a name for animals that can use their feet the same way they use their hands? Yeah, like monkeys. A word. So if I have that ability, it's called monkeys. No, you are a monkey. Okay, th that's not what I'm asking. You sound like an idiot. Okay, I don't understand the question then. Let's get back to how badass this fucking scene is. Okay, so these people right here, this is the nest people, right? Yeah, this is like the rival gang, basically. Okay. So they both they both want to rob the coaxium. They've never actually sat down and talked and realized that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So they're basically fucking each other over here. Right. But, well, they have different motivations for stealing the train, right? Well, I, I think that at the – and, again, spoilers for the end of this movie, but you find out they're basically the precursor to the rebellion. Right. And Han, I guess Han's team – Han doesn't know this, but they want to sell the coaxium to Dryden. But both of them, at the end of the day, don't want the Empire to have it. Exactly. So just as a timeline here, because I, I don't even know the, you and how, where you and Geiger are on, on this. So chronologically, how we go for all of canon, obviously episode one, episode two, then you have the Clone Wars TV show, which is fan-fucking-tastic. Right. If you guys haven't so we'll checked just, it out... Check it out. It's on Netflix. It's incredible. And the Clone Wars movie precedes. Whoops, my mic. Correct. Right. The TV show, right? Correct. But so you barely. have the, you have attack. You have episode one, Phantom Menace. Episode two, Attack of the Clones. The Clone Wars movie. Then six seasons of the Clone Wars show. Okay. Then you have Return of the or Revenge of the Sith. Technically, then, I think you have this and Rebels are concurrent. I think. Yeah. Right? You, well, you have. I think technically. You have this, then Rebels, and then Rogue One. See, the only reason I think there's some a lot of, of overlap is because think of where the character who shows up at the end of this movie is versus where he is for a large part of Rebels. You are correct, but also I don't know how – I think their timelines are off because Lando is also a – not a big character, but he is a character in Rebels, and where he is – during Rebels is not the same place that he is in this. By the way, real quick, these droids so fucking useless. Like the one in Hoth that Han... So stupid. Don't say that. I... They're just like... I, I understand the one on Hoth was basically like a patsy, like there to... Oh, what's... Dude, if you have shields that can block blasters, why aren't we making armor out of that? I don't know. Also, this chick is badass. I don't remember this fucking fight. I don't either. He, this is awesome. I must Dude, have been those... more drunk... Than I thought when I saw this. Those sticks are like the things that Grievous's guards have. Yeah, in they can Revenge like the block a lightsaber. Yeah, they can't do the damage of a lightsaber, but they can block one basically, which I can buy into. That makes sense to me. And then Thandie Newton's character, total badass. She is. I just I don't like her. So can this thing still lift the coax? Like, how many cables do we need? Just one, probably? Uh, I mean, we would obviously prefer at least two to three. Yeah, I mean, I think two is probably the bare minimum, depending on which which corners you have it at. And then Favreau's character here, obviously, he's not looking too good, but did they hit his heart? Because I don't think there's a vital organ in the shoulder normally. Again, I don't know the biology of that thing. Yeah, no, I, as a biologist, uh, I'm pretty sure that that's where the heart is located. On the outside... Of his left shoulder. By the way, Banner, Star Wars Land, obviously the first iteration won't, but how sick would this ride be there? Pretty, pretty fucking cool, actually. The train, like, yeah. tilting sideways. You have to, like, help the heist or something. Yeah. Yeah. It'd and they have to get cool. it before the bridge because, obviously, like, their freighter can't pick up the, the crate once they get in, right? So is she trying to cut the track? What's happening here? She's gonna blow the track up so that they don't, so they don't get the coaxium. She's also gonna kill herself here, um, for the best of the mission. 
I remember seeing this in the, and again, I, I'm not trying to nitpick on this movie. It's just like things you think when you watch it. I feel like there was time for her to get somewhere away from that, right? Well, the useless droids, they were keeping her from getting anywhere. That's so, I mean, true. I okay. guess they weren't exactly useless at that point. This is kind of like an homage to Fast Five, the scene where the train falls off the tracks and Dom and Brian have to jump into that lake. Yeah, I mean, I think it could also be an homage to Back to the Future 3. That's true, although this never – they actually prevent this from happening for the most part. In some least, timelines. That's true. Yeah, so here, again, they're fucking each other up, dude. And I get that, like, these – the reason these people are in this position in their life is because they typically don't sit down and talk through a situation. Why talk when you can fight, though, Jeff? That's a good point. And wear badass masks. That's true. The masks are almost like the masks uh, that Killmonger wears in Black Panther. That's – which is – I didn't realize till I uh, was looking through some – um, articles, but is actually a direct homage to his normal costume in the comics. And that's what coaxium can do, folks. That looks like a my toilet after I eat three Taco Bueno party burritos. Yeah, that was my toilet. We had chili day at work, so we sampled five different kinds of chilies and voted on which one was best. That was basically... And by the sampled, you mean you got like two bowls of each. Yeah, yeah, that was basically the men's restroom for the next three days. <laughs> So, Beckett, here, here's what I want to ask you, Banner. This is, I guess, kind of open to interpretation, but if you remember this scene diff or the, the rest of the movie differently, let me know. First off, why is he mad at Han? Because Han it's Han's fault that Thandie Newton died. Okay. So, does Beckett become the kind of double crosser he is because Thandie Newton died, or was he always that way and it just sort of I brought think he was always kind of that way. I, always, this I read it as he was always that way. But Thandie Newton kept him from being quite as bad, and now that she's dead, he's like, I have nothing else to live for, so fuck it. So they know that they were trying to get the coaxium for Red Dawn. Does anyone actually know who Dryden Voss's boss is in Red Dawn? I don't think so, but does Dryden Voss know who his boss is? Because I didn't, I never really felt like he did. Wait, say that again? Oh, dry. Uh, yeah, I guess only Amelia Clark did. Yeah, Kira. I feel like she she really only knew who her boss was. And I know that she knew like who her boss was, but did she know who her boss was? You know what I'm saying? I don't understand the question. Yeah, you got me. You're with me on the same page. Well, no, what are you saying? Anywho. Uh, right now, Woody Harrelson's character looks like he has a dicky shirt on underneath that. Well, yeah, he's got to go work on the railroad. Could be a Carhartt jacket, too. The other question, too, I guess a lot of it is like exerting power. But if Dryden Voss is some fucking badass with all these resources, why don't you just steal the coaxium? Or is it just him like trying to fucking test people? I don't think that he has that much necessarily resources and stuff. I think he's OK. He's kind of like the senator that's like, look. I need this shit to happen, but I can't do it myself because of these reasons. So I need you to do it for me. But he, okay, so here's my thing. It's like, here's the thing. Let me ask you this. Could you kill somebody? Like physically? Sure. I mean, who's the person? Are they expecting it? Uh, short, short answer. Yeah. I okay. Could. Then why would you ever, why would anybody ever hire a hitman? Okay. That's fair. Now let me put the real scenario on you. If Dryden Voss actually knows who his boss is, Darth Maul, and he knows that his life is basically dependent on getting the coaxium, which he kind of makes apparent later when he, like, fucking freaks out when they don't have it, why would you trust someone else to go get it? Like, if I know Maul's going to come fucking kill me if I don't have Let's it, be honest. I'm not hiring someone off Angie's list to go rob a train for it. Let's be honest. Vision is just up there fucking doing coke off hookers' assholes the whole night. He, well, of course. He, he can't but, actually do it. Banner, that's his nine to five is snorting blow off prostitutes' buttholes. But after hours, you got some time to go out and hijack a train. Of course you do. Not really. You know how many Netflix originals there are? Fuck, that's a good point. Is that like a gun blade like in Final Fantasy? I don't I know, know, but it's awesome. 
I love how Chewie turns around. And he's like, "All right, cavity search me." Like we don't even we don't do that here. Oh, all right. Do you want to? Is that Craig from the Ninja Turtles? It might be. <laughs> Oh my god. It's with a rotisserie chicken hat on. <laughs> the fuck was that? When is Star Wars going to learn, dude? The singing scenes? Just fucking get rid of them. I kind of wish they would have done... <laughs> Dryden Voss's parties, though, are lit. I went to one in college. Fuck, it was awful. I don't yeah. remember much of it. Yeah, Let's put best it two weeks of my life. That one party? Yeah. The weird thing, little... thing here is really cool too. So originally, the bad guy from A Night of, which is a great HBO original Finn, series, you yeah. should check it out. Was supposed to play Dryden Voss, and he was basically like a dinosaur-looking guy. Then, wait, after... the bad guy of The Night of? He, well, he's the former boxer who's like incarcerated with Riz Ahmed's character. Oh, okay, I got you. I got uh, you. Anyway. The dude that like took him under his wing in The Night of. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. Okay, I'm with you now. So after they had to do, uh, apparently the report is um, Ron um, Howard. I'm kind of drunk. Yeah, Ron Howard had to reshoot about 80% of the movie. And as a result, he couldn't make the reshoots. And they didn't even have time to do it, the CGI. So when they recast Paul Bettany, they just used prosthetic makeup on the character. Um, but kept basically his role and all his lines the same. He just aesthetically is a complete 180 from what so he So it's the same character. It's just... A different right. person and looks different. Correct. Kind of like how I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, in the original Star Wars, um, Jabba the Hutt was supposed to be like a big hairy dude, almost like right. Chewbacca. That's why I believe, and again, comment below or tweet at us at Bro Force Squad if I'm wrong, but that's why in the special features edition, they're able, to, like the scene they shot with Jabba, obviously, oh my God, Kira's yeah. hot. Yeah, she's definitely killing it. Um, obviously they didn't have the technology back then to CGI in Jabba the way that like moving like they did in the special edition, like in Jedi, he just fucking sits there. They could have done right. that with a puppet. But that scene was shot with a, like, I think an actor either in prosthetics or just a fat fucking hairy dude. It was just, just a fat hairy dude. I've actually seen it without it. And it was basically, it was really weird how they shot it. Cause it was, this, none of this dialogue right now matters basically hey kira got off of corellia just like you and now we're here so awesome her cleavage matters though so that's important yeah we've we've definitely drawn attention to the tatas and people aren't listening to us right now we know what they're looking at right fine i'm used to that i'm not life. mad about it like i don't blame yeah. you um but how they shot that was it was just a dude in like a hairy jacket and they had a step stool that harrison ford stepped on like he was stepping on the tail and that's how they filmed him oh, okay, stepping it, up on it. on his tail. And then, obviously, they cut the scene because they didn't have the technology to have Jabba there. And then, obviously, in Jedi, like we said, Jabba doesn't fucking move. Yeah. What are these rosés? Are these spike seltzers? What is this? I think it's a I think it's a a uh, rose Zinfandel. I love how Chewie has two drinks. Han's like, "Oh, is Dude, one for me?" This and right Chewie's here. Like, no. This just proves all our suspicions about Chewie. Just taking shots, having it fucking dripping down the front of you. I hope they come back and Chewie's talking to like some droid who's like a four. And he's like, look, I mean, I'm in a band. Am I the lead singer? No, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm the bassist. But if you actually are a music fan, which I think you are, by the way, two more uh, green tea shots over here. You'll know that bass is really the heartbeat of any musical group. And but, and him saying all that actually sounds like. Right. <laughs> but the droid and then the droid goes. Yeah, that's the equivalent of like the a girl going, "Oh my god, that's funny. You're funny." So what if we just like, do the rest of the pod, you as Chewie and me as R two? <laughs> How quickly would people fucking x out of this shit? Right just now? us talking about it, people are like, "Fuck these guys." It would go through all the levels. Cycling knows this. It would go through like, all right, that's kind of funny. Then it would go through, okay, stop, stop. And then it would go through, oh, my God, they're still doing it. It's kind of funny again. Yeah, it's it's back to funny. Okay, so we've talked about this on, I think it was, it was either a New Hope or Empire commentary. Comment below and let us know which one it was. Um, the Star Wars golf scramble, the, the two-man golf scramble. 
Oh, okay, I got to say this. So Geiger, if you're listening at home, yeah, he's dealing with some technical difficulties. I don't think we can bring this up till he gets his internet. He would kill us if we got that conversation in yeah, without him. Yeah, okay. We'll tease that for when he's back. I will say this. Paul Bettany, a guy who, according to him at interviews, a Hollywood producer told him after A Beautiful Mind that he'll never work again. Dude is fucking latched on. Like, he, to me, he has charisma. I love his voice. I yeah, I have no problem with him. I think he everything I've seen him in, I mean, he may not like, oh my god, he's awesome, but I'm like, I don't hate him. I I dug him in this movie. I like him as vision. I know that that's a role that like is kind of one note. Yeah, um, I mean, it's fine. I mean, but he's got I think he's got more range than you think. And he's married to Jennifer Connelly, so obviously he has charisma in real life. Because if you can bag that, then good work. He really looks like some... It looks like his face has cellulite with, like, the stretch marks. Yeah, I actually... That's one thing I kind of wish they would have... Even as an offhanded comment, like, him explain, like, look, I'm a badass. These scars are because of this. And just explain how he got those. Or even as an offhanded comment... I would have liked to know that. So this is another fact that I excluded, yet I'm still going to bring it up. So because, an unfun fact. Right. It's not a fun one. Can we turn so these into th Banner's stupid facts? Ban well, this is a Banner's stupid fact. Yeah. Brought to you by horns. Um, so they reference to get the coaxium, they have to go to a spice mine. And spice, I, this is according to IMDb. So if I'm wrong or if this is not canon, fucking blame them. Because I don't shoot the messenger. But spice in the Star Wars universe is basically an analogy or it's analogous to uh, narcotics in the real world. So it's not like they're going to a planet where they mine like pepper and cumin and salt. It would what basically go into a. Paprika is, is an outlier. It's not. A, please don't bring that in, into this scenario. It would be like going to like a farm where like opioids were farmed or like um, so marijuana. So basically so. they're. They're harboring death sticks. Essentially, yes. Okay. I wit is there ever another drug reference in Star Wars? Because we're beating the death stick drum, because I think it's all we have. That's all we have. So right. wait, you're telling me that Paul Bettany is the Pablo Escobar of the Star Wars universe? Yeah, he's the Tony Montaigne of uh the anthology movies, okay. yes. Got it. I just I just want to make Paul sure that we're all on the same page here. He's probably gets less pussy than Tony Montana. Actually, I bet Dryden Voss is either um, asexual, meaning he like strictly just masturbates, or he's probably homosexual, which is fine. But to have Kira Honestly, this close, I bet he, I bet he only gets down with aliens. I could see that, or maybe droids. No, he's not Lando. Well, Lando's not doesn't have like a monopoly on fucking robots. Come on. It's 2018, Banner. Jesus. Tits. No, this is a long time ago. It's not 2018. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so, but it, it's so long ago. Maybe it's like time is a circle. Maybe it's like back in the future. This is way off topic, but I just saw the subtitles spell Kira's name. Not how I would have spelled it. With a Q, right? Yeah, not how I would have spelled it. I love how Han always vol volunteers himself as a pilot. That's like, all right, dude, relax. See, again, this actually scene right here is really what turned me off of Ironreich. I felt like he was trying to do an impression of Harrison Ford, but it was really, really bad. But then I'm like, well, maybe it was so bad he's trying to do his own spin on Han Solo, and I didn't like it. And yeah, that was my problem it, with it. No, I agree. And again, I, I, like, I have to reiterate what I said off the top. I like his character in this movie a lot. A lot. Maybe even loved his character. I just never thought, oh my god, that's Han Solo. That's the which thing. Is, and which here's is fine. the thing. Going into this, I knew he wasn't going to be Han Solo. Because Harrison Ford is Han Solo. I just, I wish he would have committed to being, trying to do Harrison Ford as Han Solo. Or trying to completely give us a Han Solo that we never saw. Because we can say this unequivocally, that is what Donald Glover did. He tried to do a Billy D. Williams, and he, he did. crushed it. He crushed it. There were yeah. if you close your eyes, and we're about to we're about to see him here. If you close your eyes, you go, "Holy shit, that and I is Billy D. Williams." 
I do think, too, by the way, were those tusks we saw outside? Do you think that's the same type of elephant that the Tuscan Raiders ride? Ooh, I, uh, what is it called? I don't know. Also, Cycli would know, but yeah. Director's trademark here, cameo from Ron Howard's brother coming up. Um, so I will say this. I think we have to give Ian Reich a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because he was working with two directors also. Well, really three were, because Phil Lord is two people. That's true. Who so, are probably actually guaranteed giving him, you know, different direction to go with the character. You, wait, you're telling me the people that did 21 Jump Street and Apollo 13 aren't giving him the same <laughs> advice? And also Phil and Lord did uh, – Phil, Phil Lord and Chris Miller. I'm sorry. Um, they also did the Lego movie, which was great. Well, yeah. But also <laughs> – how do you hire them and then are like, wait, you're making this comedic? Like, yeah, no shit, bro. That's what I do. I don't know. I feel like Kathleen Kennedy, she I love her up. and she's incredible. But you don't bring them in and then be surprised when they do yeah. the shit that you brought them in for. Yeah. She fucked up more by hiring them than she did Ryan Johnson, I think. And she got lucky that Ron Howard and Spielberg and Lucas go back. That yeah, that they're all fucking, boys. That he was willing to bail her ass out. Otherwise, this would have been like a fucking Thor the Dark World scenario where Alan Taylor came in halfway through. <laughs> Don't even get me started on that. Hey, how much money have you lost to when you're playing Sabak? I mean, you, I, this is the reason I've been divorced twice. You know what I'm saying? I don't let's just, think that makes let's sense. Let's just say... My first son, he could have gone to San Jose State. I could have paid all four years. Then fucking Sabak happened. And now they're going, and I, now they're going to, to Yale? Yeah, and that's only because he has a mixed martial arts scholarship. That's true. Banner, I hate to do this to you, but because Geiger's dealing with the... He's, people at home, Geiger is doing his best to be here. He literally texts us. He has to fucking call his cable company. Yeah, his internet all, is literally gone. And we said, well, why don't you just call us on your phone? And he goes, then I can't watch the movie. And Which I, I still don't understand the problem. I don't understand the problem either. Banner, I have to go piss. We're you and I are just gonna have to tag God each other. damn it! Why don't you just use a fucking bottle? Well, also I have to refill my beverage. All right, I got you. That, I'll talk about Sabak and the intricacies of Sabak while you're gone. This right here, I, I know I'm the biggest critic of Einreich, but this right here, his chemistry and his charisma in this scene with. Uh, Donald Glover as Lando, I thought was fantastic. This is when we really, they did a great job of reiterating what was told to us in Empire when we met Lando. Um, they go back and they're old card buddies and they gamble together and th the way the way that they interact with each other and the weird ass aliens around them, they really did a good job of giving us Something out of nothing. And I'd, I'd still fuck Khaleesi here. I'm just saying. This guy that eats his, his fingernails, I didn't really like. But this game is fun. See, that is that is a Han Solo line, I think. That's really all I have to say about the scene. Now, I know I got to talk about this, and I know Geiger's having technical difficulties, so I'm going to keep going, but Han is not wearing a vest here, and I'm still digging it. It's more like a leather jacket. The shoulder pads might be a little much, but I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm also running out of things to say. Lando's costume is pretty good. A little, little eccentric, but I'd rock it. I'd rock it. Now that Hornacek peed, I have to pee. Has that ever happened to you guys? Like when you ha when you don't have to pee or you're not hungry and then somebody's like, I'm kind of hungry. Then all of a sudden you're like, fuck, I'm starving. Chewie's over here just fucking like, yo, where can I get a bowl? I need to smoke some. He's been out of prison like eight minutes. So there's that. I'm kind of surprised they didn't put any... Um, homages to other movies like in uh it's, i think it's i think it's revenge of the sith we see et i'm kind of surprised that they didn't do any any cameos to other movies in it kind of surprised they didn't do that 
Donald Glover fucking killed it. I wonder if the dude from Mythbusters was on here. He was like a he like built battle dro- battle robots to to fight and stuff. I wonder if he ever fought in a dark ass alley like that. Again, I'm just a Lando line. I don't have it with me here, but you know, maybe again, Kira with the apostrophe thing in there. I'm just not digging the way that they spelled it. I'm actually really upset about it. Yo, if I had the opportunity to smoke a bowl with uh, Chewy, I would. I'd do it in a heartbeat. I think it'd be fun. He'd just sit there and be like, or whatever fucking noise he makes. But I think it'd be fun. I'd be like, yo, Chewy, you want to hit this? And he'd be like, you can hit this. Wow, what a great time for me to come back. What are you talking about? <laughs> was that Wookiee sex noises? No, I was just talking about how I would I would love to smoke a bowl with Chewy because I'd be like, hey, man, you want to hit this? He'd be like, Ugh! and I'd be like, cool. <laughs> he would never say no to that. I'm not going to lie. I feel like you took the longest piss ever. Well, I had to get more wine and then my fiance. Would... Hold on. What are you eating? Not a cookie. God damn it. So just like I was talking about when he was gone. I, I was so excited telling the people when somebody's like, oh, I'm not like you're not hungry, but they're like, you know, I want to eat. And you're like, fuck, I'm starving, too. Now that you're eating a cookie, I want a fucking cookie. Yeah. So Woody Harrelson is almost like, all right, Lando, I get it. You fuck. But also I do, too. So there can only be one of us. Okay. They got 48 hours to land as many chicks as they can. Who wins, Lando or Woody Harrelson? Lando. I mean, age would have to be the tiebreaker, right? I can't stand his droid girlfriend here. Absolutely droid, can't stand it. This droid isn't even hot. There's Ron Howard's brother. I did not know that was Ron Howard's brother. Yeah. He's in all his movies, yeah. cameo, Apollo 13. and He wasn't even a cameo in Apollo 13, was he? He was like a main character. That's true. He was like one of the dudes he was, at Mission Control. Yeah, he was, one of the, he was one of the dudes that like put the sock on the little air filter and was like, we got to make a square peg fit a round hole or whatever. Wow, that's did. the exact quote that he had. Yeah. The cap. Yo, I don't fuck around when it comes to space movies, all right? So when you first heard this movie was revolved around Han doing the Kessel Run, what were your initial thoughts? So I guess I had two kind of simultaneously. My first one was like, yeah, I mean, I think that's like the most compelling story you can tell with him if you're going to do an origin story. And then my second thought was like, fuck, man, that story sounds so much cooler, like hearing about than it does actually seeing like I really just don't want to see it I want it to be like a legend yeah my thoughts on just the whole Han Solo movie was first off I don't want it I have always been part of the allure and part of why I love Han Solo so much growing up and and obviously we weren't I wasn't alive when Star Wars came out or any of that but growing up and being able to be with Uncle Banner and, and my mom and see the Star Wars movies and then go and see them in theaters when they were re-released before the prequels. The allure of Han Solo is he's this dude that can fast talk his way out of anything. And you yeah. literally have no idea whether what he's saying is the truth or a bunch of bullshit. And I don't want to know. I don't want to know either. Right. This movie tells us a lot of what he's saying is truthful. And I'm not a fan of that. So when they Although said the- when they said it's about him doing the Kessel Run, I was like, I mean, okay, that's cool. And then I was like, wait a minute. I literally don't want to see this. Also, right, do this you is- like do you like the Millennium Falcon here? They yes. changed it up a little. I love the it. The middle part still did they ever explain like why that is on here? Like that no, middle part. I don't think they ever did. Which again, I like. I like the mystery. But also fucking badass first time Han and Lando set eyes on the Millennium. Really Falcon. cool. Really cool. I agree with you. I think um, obviously Han Solo is like a 
an iconic movie character, so you just know inherently. <sighs> you know what sucks you know, right we, now? I feel like what you're going to say is really important, but I have to pee so bad, so hurry. No, I got it. I can talk while you pee. Yeah, but I want to hear what you have to say. Um, I actually kind of forgot what my point was. I right. got sidetracked on. Then I'm going to go pee, so you talk. That's perfect. Yeah, I, I can. This is a good time to take a piss, too. The use of mountains in these movies is just fucking great. Basically, like, my thought is if I if I want to feel like a badass or feel like someone who's one step ahead of any of my adversaries, just go up in a fucking mountain and stare off in the distance. And even if you're not spying on them, it just, you know, someone else looking at you is like, oh, that dude knows exactly where his enemies are. And again, the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, and this is kind of counterintuitive because the lights in there look like black, light, black lights, but you run one through here, dude, there's probably semen on every one of these switches. I mean, the 70s in this place, uh, you'd have to be hard-pressed to find a time when an orgy wasn't taking place in here. Shit. It's probably used more for interracial gangbangs than it was for even fucking flying the damn thing. Lando referencing his mother is kind of interesting. I mean, it's it's a brief sort of like offhanded reference, but I think it's good when you when you direct a movie like this. Obviously, like inherently, directors get into their craft probably because they love storytelling. So it is tough. Like you want to be a contributor to the Star Wars lore, the Star Wars universe, but you know that your story has a definitive endpoint because like it's leading up to these iconic films. So in terms of taking you know, carte blanche or like doing things with characters that are outside of what the studio asks. You don't have too much wiggle room there. So these little nuggets that they let the director or the screenwriter and here it's Lawrence Kasdan. So not the best example. Cause he, you know, screen wrote a lot of the originals, but the director is getting their own chance to put in like little character bits. I think it's a big deal. And a night, you know, you got to keep the creative people happy, obviously. Hyperdrive, again, nothing gets chicks more wet than going into hyperdrive. I do it in the bedroom all the time. Come in 15 seconds. You're welcome. It's kind of crazy, too, that, you know, the Millennium Falcon, we've obviously seen it have its performance issues with hyperdrive, but this is it at full mast. Uh, all right, so I'm back. Real though. quick question. Um, a actually no statement then question i love that they're playing this game of course it's and awesome. i love, love love this is like one of the this is one of the things that makes this movie like all right and now i do think we needed it that it fucking leaves off at the same point in the game that it's on when luke turns it on yeah god damn it that's cool man yeah, really cool um next Every dice we have that pisses us off we have a moment like this next uh question statement i actually for oh uh hey are we sponsored by sudden link no sudden link is a bunch of motherfuckers okay we care. We, way, we're never uh, gonna be sponsored by them right by the way update amelia clark still gorgeous sorry continue yeah while you were peeing we established that we'd still fuck her as well in case you were wondering oh okay good yeah so we're that's still the still our status on the subject I'll update you if I ever get to a point where I wouldn't fuck her. So, okay, so uh, you might as well just I, stop talking the rest of the pod because you're never going to say, gonna say I, that. No, I didn't say that that's the only situation I would speak under. I just said that I would update you. This is called foreplay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not familiar with it, but apparently it exists in some cultures. Like in Africa. Yeah, that's probably the, Whatever. Uh, supposedly there's a shirt in this closet that Lando wears in Empire. I read that online, too. I'm just not... It's that type of attention to detail that I'm like, you know, it's so weird that things like that are in movies, and then, like, the Fox X-Men continuity happens. Like, how Yo, the fuck do people we've pay We've got this plenty close? of time. I can explain that to you. No, no. We, no one ever has that much time. But, like, how do you put that much attention to detail, and then also there's, like, such massive fuck-ups in some of these movies? And also, this was more like on the nose, but when they get to the spice mine, Woody Harrelson's character puts on the... Yeah, the one that the, Lando actually wears in Re Jedi. Of the Jedi. Yeah. It's basically like his uh, linebacker face mask yeah. thing. 
What's the line uh, that I think it's Lando's droid says about like the Millennium Falcon speaking like a bunch of weird languages that also kind of mirrors something 3PO says in the original trilogy? I don't know. I hate his droid, so I just stop listening every time she talks. Okay, that makes sense. Chewie right now is looking back at the game. He's I cannot off- stand that they spell Kira with a fucking Q. Deal with it, bro. I always get those one thing stuck in my goddamn head, and that's what that's I like. Get stuck totally in. like a white trash way that a girl would spell it. It's Kira, but it's not with any of the conventional letters. It's like Kira. my name is Brandy, but I spell it with an I. Like at the beginning. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Geiger and I once is a true story. Once met a girl named Kether. With no, a K. Like, no, you didn't. I swear to God. No, I was I'm like, not going to believe you until Kether comes on the pod. Uh, okay, I doubt we could arrange that. But I, at the same time, it's probably not too many Kethers if we started searching for her. So I'm just going to ask this, because we're all thinking of it. How how would Lando fuck that droid? Honestly, I think the droid fucks him. That makes way more sense. That's but why also I'm the, the droid, smart one on the pod. And this is fine. It's 2018. The droid is voiced by a female actor and I think portrays itself like kind of like a female. I'm the pretty sure it, since it's a female, it would be an actress. But but actually, they prefer to be called actors now. Fucking read a book. Really? Yeah. Why? That's been, uh, that's been a thing for probably like two or three years. It was an Oscars thing. Ah, Best fucking female Meryl actor, Street. I believe. Fucking yeah, Meryl Streep. God damn it. Hey, Kira's up here right now like, hey, can we change the fucking music up in here? On, that's one thing I wanted to comment on at some point tonight, which we, we knew it would come up. The score, it's it's pretty good. But there's nothing that's in your face, but there's nothing that you're like, eh, not, didn't like it. It's just a this nice, w- medium, middle-of-the-road score. It does what it needs to do. Was this Williams? It wasn't, right? No, it was not Williams. And I don't think it was Giacchino either, which I was actually surprised about. I'm surprised they would even make a Star Wars movie if neither of those two guys could yeah, do the score. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check. Giacchino, dude. I don't know how that guy even has time to take a shit. Yeah, dude. He is all over the place. He does a ton, though, of it's not his. He takes what other people does. And, uh, like, like Jurassic World, that was Giacchino. He took what John Williams did and goes, okay, here it is. Now I'm just going to do a little ride the coattails. It was actually John Powell is who did it. Powell, give me his resume. What's he done? By the way, while you're looking that up, the visuals of Kessel, and I don't like the planet so much. Like, I get it. It's gritty. This is incredible, it's a spice mine. But the fucking, like... Uh, atmosphere heading in my god dude that is fucking ominous god fucking damn it what did he do a movie you hated or something yes <laughs> lay it on me ants oh fuck yeah no so the dude's a fucking baller he did ants the road to el dorado chicken run some what other stuff hell? he did shrek evolution rat race here's the problem with the shrek score though the born identity All that Matt- all that matters with Shrek is the soundtrack. The, the score is like The nothing. score didn't matter. He did Drumline. Yeah, again, all that matters there is the fucking drummers, not you. Agent Cody Banks, the Italian job. It's got your boy the in fir- it. The first Agent Cody Banks? Uh, I haven't gotten. He may have done the other one. So he basically did the Born. He did the Born movies. Um, he did uh, X-Men Last Stand. I didn't know that. So another horrible movie. That one was actually pretty good. He did Kung Fu Panda. Great movie. I'm on a the Kung original? Fu original. Yeah, I'm on a Kung Fu Panda kick right now, guys. Hancock Bolt. He's actually doing quite so, a bit. Real quick, is Kira in Lando's cl- like what is she dressed as right now? Because this is a spice mine. It's not like the Emperor would have any jurisdiction here, right? No, they do not. Look at that vape pen this dude has. Yeah, what's with all the vape pens? Is this dude's like, hey, if you want to come in, we have to know you're fucking cool and that you vape. So, like, puff this real quick. It's black cherry. She's like, oh, that's kind of a deal I don't breaker. like cherry. Now, if it was strawberry? 
He's like, that was actually the real test. If you would suggest a cooler fucking flavor, you're in. Why am I turned on at her punching someone? Like, punch me. I, but you know what? Fuck this, because she gave him the goddamn dice. Oh, my God. They dude, shove it we... down your throat, dude. Okay, if you're at home, please comment on the YouTube or at Broforce Squad on Twitter. Were the dice ever shown in the original trilogy? No. And if they were, was it ever at all even like a plot point? Okay, if they're in the fucking background, cool. I, I have shit in the background at my apartment that like is not at all important to who I am as a person. Also, how do we have, like, spaceships that can levitate? And then the security system at this place looks like it's all, like, VHS recorded and old Samsung TVs. There's a weird orgy about to take place in this room. I can already tell. We got two droids. About it. Two droids, one chick. Is that That's the title of the video. <laughs> I just one got super top, excited. Right? <laughs> So the vape pen is also a key? I don't remember that. That's a good point. That's what? just efficient, though, man. These fucking droids, dude. <laughs> you hate the droids. I just, like, it's like cheap labor. I get it. But at the same, oh, wow, Chewie, they, Wookiees really do rip arms off. Right? Can you imagine being so strong you could just rip a person's arms off of their body? It'd be insane. So what's Beckett's role here just to, like, distract him? Uh, to be honest I'm with you, I don't like know. This. Dude, he's got the little the little uh, gun twist thing down. Yeah, Kira, not only is she hot, but she's a badass. She's, okay, so she stabbed him with the vape pen. So is, is at any point anyone going to puff this thing, or what's up? Jeff, I don't think it's actually a vape pen. What? I actually kind of dug this scene. This is ear. Okay, maybe it's not an homage. Maybe it's even like somehow related to the mask that Leia throws on when she comes to Jabba's palace in Jedi. And again, she yeah. fakes. She, it's a real thermal detonator in that scene, but she acts like she's going to blow the whole place up. That's a serious question, though. Have we ever actually seen... Maybe Boba Fett used one, but have we ever actually seen a thermal detonator explode? Yeah, I don't know that we have. I think it's only been used to... Maybe they don't even fucking do anything. It's like a placebo effect. That's true. That, that's, it's got to be an homage. That's not even close to the thing that Leia wears in, in return. Look at these droids, man. We got a f clusterfuck of useless droids up here. Yeah, but they're all free now. That's the thing. What's... Okay, honest question. Droid wins its freedom, right? Like that little fucking scooter droid. Yeah. What's the best case scenario for the type of life it lives? It can do anything it wants. I mean... Like... <sighs> best case. Absolutely. Like, what kind of life are we even, like, fighting for? Honestly... Here? It could probably be it could probably vacuum the empire's bedroom, the emperor's bedroom. So that's uh that's actually not a bad It's not like, a bad no. gig, man. No, that's true. <laughs> this droid just like fuck this place, <laughs> stepping on all the buttons. You come back, it's like it's like taking a shit on its boss's desk. Yeah, I was gonna say, if if out of any of the droids, that's me as a droid. He's like, This is for not giving us Columbus Day off. Like, well, to be fair, most this is pretty are. cool. I like this scene too. Where they that's Han, right? Yeah, that's Han. Okay, I figured. Where he get, yeah, he's like, God damn it, should we hear? And he gives him the fucking stick to go free See, his people. This is the, this is the shit that I need because to be totally honest. When a new hope starts, like Chewie and Han have been friends for so long, they're boys. Right, but we don't get to see them do any of this cool shit together, yeah. really. You know, it's like they've been there, done that. And Chewie's a guy we've always been like, dude, you could wreck like 30 people at a time. You just choose not to. Here's the thing. Chewie would fuck so many more people up if he didn't smoke so much dope. 
Right, but if you gave him the choice, like, of course he's going to pick the, you know, smoking. Up. Right, it's like obviously. A- Honestly, he probably does a lot of edibles, too. 100%. You can't have that much smoke in the Millennium Falcon. Like, it's in space. It blows yeah, something the, up. The smoke detectors would just go off at just being smart. Yeah. He's a, like, he's a responsible stoner. So what's the reason right now that Beckett isn't down in this spice mine with Han? Is he have to, like, open door? Yeah, he's protecting Kira, which is spelled with a Q, which is... Why do we need to protect the, protect the chick that just beat the shit out of 15 people? I don't think he knew that she protected... That she could beat the shit out of 15 So people. we still think of her as, like, the damsel in distress. Yeah. We don't know that she could probably actually kill most everyone here. Yeah. Well, you think about it. Leia was not a badass until the third one. So in terms of Coaxium, how much do they need to bring Dryden? Like, we need all these things? Yeah, I think it I think it reduces down. I was trying to think of like what how much would have been in that train car. Granted, there could have been other shit in there like DVD players and like Twizzlers and stuff, but this looks like not as big of a haul. Uh... Dude, Lando has the easiest job, just waiting the yeah, fucking ship. Just just chilling the ship. Yeah. I guess when it's your ship, though, that's kind of the advantage you yeah. get. Also, I was talking about this when you uh, when you were taking a piss. I would rock this outfit he's got on. I don't doubt that you haven't worn this to work this week. Uh, well, without maybe the tie. the yellow? No, yeah, I didn't have the tie. Of course not. I've seen, though, like in Phantom Menace, for example, when he's in the hangar bay and puts shields up, the people with, like, regular blasters can't do anything no, to they, shit. No, it's impenetrable at that point. So just put your fucking shields up, dude. We'll hang out here all goddamn day. Unless they come out with, like, a bazooka laser or something. See, again, I, I dig what happens right here. Oh, yeah, this is a badass scene. Yeah, this is cool. Because you're thinking, like, how is even Han going to get out of this? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Chewie walks up, and he's like, look, Han promised me an ounce of weed on him if I protect him. So I'm about to fuck you guys up. Chewie's probably on bath salt, so he's at that point right now where he's, like, in the good trip where he's, like... Yeah, before he starts eating people's faces. Right. Well, maybe this is, like, concurrent to him eating people's faces. Maybe. Because they have masks on, he doesn't get, like, the taste for human flesh as much. You can't see it. You know, like, you don't really want a cheese plate till you get to the party and they actually start walking around with them. So, you may know this. I don't know this. Are any of these other Wookiees in, like, did any of them fight in the Battle of Kashyyyk? Do we know? That's a good question. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. One of these extras just, like, totally flopped when he got hit with a stick right now. It's not flopping if it gets called. It didn't, though. I'm just saying. I just, Dude, need to, I just need to make like, sure everybody understands that it's not flopping if it doesn't get called. Also, the Lando, mine, there's no way you were shooting anybody. I'm sorry. Correct. Also, if you're on the spice mine and that's coaxium, don't fucking shoot at it. Yeah, that, seems, that seems very counterproductive to what you're trying you to accomplish. Kill, you will literally kill everyone and then some. Everyone's buttholes will envelop around their heads. But right, at the get, same time, don't you kind of want to see that? That's uh, okay. I would not fight seeing that Beckett with the gun spinning. Can't yeah. get enough. Of can't it, get dude. enough of it. That's like, why it's, that's another reason that's a good Western. I th- that might've been off pod. What this movie is categorizes basically everything is what we did. Yeah, that basically needs to be a whole chest day. Yeah. But if you're Beckett after every kill, you got to do the gun. You got to do a gun, right? gun spin. Right. Love the, uh, love the, um, you smuggle the smuggling. Hold. Oh Yeah. yeah. God, see, that's the like mint little shit. That's the that, like, little shit that I'm I'm digging. Here's here's, like, here's my question too. How myself. much of stuff like that do you think was Ron Howard, and how much do you think was in the original script by Phil and Lord? See, I want to give Lord and Miller some more credit. Why do I keep saying saying Phil Lord? Probably because I said it earlier. Mm. Kind of like kind of like the Michael and Jason thing when we did our Halloween commentary a while back. God. God damn it. Go check that out. Our original Halloween 1978 movie commentary. By the way, this droid death, I mean, no. am I supposed to feel no. something or is I, it supposed to be kind of Honestly, I was I was clapping. I was overjoyed that this bitch died. That's one thing this movie does. If it does introduce a kind like a semi-annoying character, they usually kill them off pretty quick. Yeah. 
Um, what's your face? Favreau. Thandie Newton? Favreau? Favreau, Thandie. I, I didn't find Thandie annoying. I just thought her... her I just didn't like her character. Who who voiced who voiced the the robot Ellen DeGeneres? So I looked the actress up, and I hadn't reckoned she was in one episode of Black Mirror, I believe, but I hadn't recognized her from anything else. She's a British actress. Mm, I feel like it should have been Ellen Ellen DeGeneres because that would have made more sense. You want to hear the sad thing? I think she and I'm guessing here again. Comment below and feel free to tell me if I'm wrong. But I feel like this droid had more or as many lines in this movie as Gwendolyn Christie had as Captain Phasma and her two Star Wars films combined. Yeah. Ugh. I just, this scene right here is cringeworthy. It is absolutely cringe, cringe, And almost even worse than that, I think the only thing worse than a cringeworthy scene is when a movie thinks that it's driving home and like an emo- emotional through line and the audience doesn't give two shits about it. How excited are you about uh, them doing a Lando movie where it's going to be an entire two and a half hours of that? I'll say this. I don't think that will ever happen. It I know it's been announced. There's no way it won't ever happen. I don't think it'll ever happen. I think we will get Donald Glover as Lando in another movie. For sure, yeah. But I don't think it will be a Lando movie. Hell, if anything, we'll get a Solo 2, I think. I mean, shit, the way they set this up. I would love for a trilogy centered around, you know, Maul and, and Red Dawn. Which is very easy to do because they've already played the, set the groundwork with uh, Rebels and the Clone Wars show. And then now at the end of this, they've set the groundwork and they've got Ewan McGregor on board to do a Obi-Wan movie. Yep. And that could be the end of the That's trilogy. That's the end. Like, you don't even have to bring McGregor in until the third movie. Yeah. And let me just say this, and again, I know that we're not always right. I know that we bitch a lot. We, I mean the fans. But the fact that Maul was even included in this, and that was Ron Howard's inclusion. 100% Ron Howard. Uh, I feel like it's just, it's it's always a nice tip of the cap and respect when you show that you listen to what the fuck the fans say. I'm not at all advocating do what we want all the time because we have a lot of stupid fucking ideas. And you know better than us. But when you do things like introducing Maul at the end of this movie, or I guess reintroducing Maul, it lets us know that you do value our opinion to a degree. And yeah, take my fucking money. Well, and not only that, you 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 have two folds with the Maul thing, which Maul's not even fucking in it yet, and we'll get we don't really have time at once he gets introduced to get into it. So we might as well get into it now. This part is fucking cool too. Where oh the shit, the Empire's here. here. Visuals are incredible. Eleven out of ten. And dude. right here, I the first this is the first time we see Han Solo piloting the Falcon. I got goosebumps when I saw this in theaters. Yeah, and how ominous is this? Like there's no way out. There's no way out. God, dude. And that TIE noise of the TIE fighters. And, li- and iconic noise. I don't yeah. care who you are. Fuck you if you don't. The think only other it. noise that might be just as iconic, I'm not going to say more because there's no way it's more, is the sound of a raptor. Ooh, that's a, good, that's a good one. Now, these actually look like the TIE bombers. They, they're they definitely a hybrid between the TIE fighter and a TIE bomber. I didn't even know the bombers had, like, laser capabilities. So I guess it makes sense because it's, like, the easiest thing. Yeah, to I mean, it's these. like... It's like, hey, I'm a sniper, but I still have a Glock on my hip. Dude, I always hated in uh, Rogue One or Rogue Squadron on 64 when you would shoot. I think the A wing could shoot yep. like rapidly, but then its lasers would burn out. Yeah, they would burn up. You have to let them cool then, down. Oh god, it would fucking suck. Yeah. Story of my life, blow my load too early. Um. Anyway, going back to the whole mall thing, not only like they do two things. First, they go, we introduce them. They're like. For the common fan that hasn't seen the TV show, which I would say is probably... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Banner. I have to interrupt real quick. So this is the first Star Wars movie that doesn't have some iteration of I have a bad feeling about this. And they did the great turn on its head right there where Han says, I got a really good feeling about this. Right. Which I loved. Which I... Oh, I love that too. I'm sorry to interrupt. Continue. No, no. You're fine. That's a very important point. Um, I also like how they put... When they put Beckett right here in the, in the shooter, that it can actually move because it's... I was going to say, have we ever seen the pedals on these turrets We've never seen the pedals, and when Luke shot, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, and then obviously in uh, Force Awakens, the it was stuck in one position, so they had to pilot it to get it to where they wanted to shoot. That's right, yeah, because uh, yeah. Ray was able to like, so flip 
Yeah. In my opinion, this is the first time you have a competent person that can shoot as well as a working ship. And it's just cool to see that targeting computer back up again. Really cool. From A New Hope. So I'm going to keep going back, but please interrupt me anytime you need. Uh, Darth Maul, for the common fan, which I would even say, well, you're, I would say you're a big fan of Star Wars. You haven't even seen Clone Wars and or Rebels. Correct. I've seen through. the Clone Wars movie, but I've not seen either show. And it's not because of lack of interest at all. It's, it's, it's time. Purely. It takes yeah. a lot of time. I would say I'm in the minority where I've seen it all. And what they did there was they go, hey, if you didn't know this, Darth Maul's still alive. They tease it where we can explain why he's still alive. If you've seen the shows, you know that he's alive, and you know he can fuck some shit up. And I, I love that they that that's what they did, or or even Ron Howard did that. And Jeff, you're the one who actually told me this, and you can probably elaborate more on how he decided to bring Darth Maul back in that scenario. So it was actually his son's idea. He was like, you know, what would yeah, be really so cool, if, cool is if you incorporated Darth Maul. And originally they were going to have him be a bounty hunter, just meeting with Dryden Voss in the beginning. And uh, that and was then, that was when. Miller and Lord or Phil or John were doing it, right? Yeah, I think he was going to be like referenced or maybe even seen. And then Ron Howard's son basically came in and said, so Red Dawn was going to be just Dryden Voss's uh, terrorist group or, or gangster group or whatever. And Ron Howard credited his son, who Bryce Dallas Howard's brother, uh, with the yeah, idea of saying, what if, he's, what if he's kind of the ominous overarching villain and his son, who apparently was a big fan of Rebels, filled him in on some of the continuity he gets with um, Pablo Hidalgo, who's in charge of all the continuity. How for fucking Lucasfilm. cool a job would that be? Dude, best fucking job on Earth. Your only job is to know everything about Star Wars. Sounds awful. By the way, are you getting like a Rogue One vibe? 100% uh, Rogue One vibe. I can't remember Mads Mikkelsen's character's name, but when they go to yeah. the base where he's basically designing where, the Death Star. Yeah, where he's basically held hostage and they execute all the other engineers. What's yeah. Jin Urso? Galen Urso? Galen Urso, yeah. Yeah. How fucked it is the landing gear, though, on the Falcon? Like, we're just gonna, sorry, we're just gonna have to crash it when we get in. It'll That's be like fine. Revenge of the Sith again, where they just completely fuck up Coruscant. It's fine. I don't understand the but problem. Coruscant's such a shithole anyway, who would even know? Yeah. They were, I mean, that part needed to be rebuilt anyway. It probably helped them because now you can really get the the yeah. tax dollars. The tax behind right it. off, right? So what's the problem with the coaxium? Is it, does it need to be cool? Or? Yeah. So it's basically like when you when you pull oil out of the ground, it needs to be refined. Well, apparently coaxium, when it's not refined, blows up. And okay. So this. All right. Real quick. Sorry, Banner. I, I'm just like realizing or remembering. No, things you're fine. Go I'm gonna go pee. So you just you talk for a while. Okay, so this scene L337. Okay. My not bad. only was that not it's still coming. My you're, bad. But you're leaning into the microphone as you do it so it has like clear intent behind it. So L337 uh who was Lando's fuck buddy slash protocol droid, I don't know, is one of the protocols like giving blowjobs maybe. Uh, who passed away, he he was able to keep intact her or his or its mind. By the way, fucking incredible visual. And if you've seen the trailer for Godzilla, King of the Monsters, this right here is right on par with it. Um, we're living in the golden age of computer-generated imagery. Thank God, it's awesome. But L3's mind is is now being used as the nav system in the Millennium Falcon, and assumedly, like it's it's not removed in canon. Like, I mean, I don't. It's really not that important in the grand scheme of things. But there's a scene, I believe, I want to say maybe it's an Empire, but three PO links up. I don't know to plug in like his iPod or what, but to the Millennium Falcon, and he says like, "Oh, your ship is talking to me." So, in theory, that's three PO talking to L three, or they're having sex. I don't really know how droids. How, how that makes sense. I think when it's kind of like into sexting. Each. It's not really having sex, but you still feel guilty about it. Got it. And this is basically him, quote unquote, cheating on the Kessel Run, right? Which is like the... Yeah. I don't know. This, again, the idea of seeing him do the Kessel Run, all right, I guess that's cool. I don't didn't actually want to see him do it. 
and uh, I don't know. I could live without all of this. Visually, so, don't get me wrong, it's cool, but I could live without it. Is this a black hole like enclosing on itself? I don't know. I think it's like a black hole, maybe. That's what I. That's what I asked, though. You know, it sucks we lost Geiger. Like, this would be better with him definitively. But I feel like you and I are at that perfect level of drunk where, like, we can keep this going. Oh, dude, I'm pretty hammered right now. Honestly, I need to slow down because I, I keep having to pee. Which, that's a good that's... spot to be in right now. If you – did you just go pee right now? Oh, yeah. I was in it. Oh, that was really quick because I almost didn't even get my fucking point out. Yeah. I was Woody Harrelson it. right now, like, this, I picture this, the guy who's like, I just need – we need to do a shot real quick, then we'll be back on our A game. Okay. Here's – okay. Who do we got in the cockpit right now? We got Woody Harrelson. We got Han Solo. We got Donald Glover. And we got Khaleesi. Out of the yeah. four people on the pod, who's who? What do you mean who's who? So So – out of you, me, oh, Geiger, and Cycli. Um, fuck, that's a good question. It's tough, right? Uh, I, I feel man, like I'm Woody Harrelson. I was going to guess that, only because he's running out to get something. You would come back with shots, probably. I would come back with shots, but also at the same time, somehow I would fix the problem. Am I Kira just because she's the least cool, I guess, or the least idiotic? <laughs> She's, I guess, the voice of reason. I don't want to be the voice. I, I feel like we're see, like. See, that's the thing. I don't know. Oh, Chewie's there too. Oh fuck. Okay, Kira's out then. You're definitely Chewie. I'm then. definitely Chewie. Unequivocally, uh, Cycli's got to be Lando, Cycli's right? Cycli's for sure, Lando. Yeah. Uh, then I would say Geiger's probably Han, just because you know he's probably like this fucking suave yeah, one with the vest. See, I don't want to say that, but I feel like he is too. So then that makes me Beckett. I don't really think I'm as much Beckett, but it's more just process of elimination, probably. Yeah. I fuck Thandy Newton, though, so I guess that's... Yeah, you're more. Something. You're definitely more Beckett than you are Kira. Thanks? <laughs> I mean, I would hope so. I love this. It doesn't fucking work. Like, that is so... That's the most Han Solo. Yeah, it's the most Han Solo Millennium Falcon thing, and then all of a sudden it does. Now, his blood did that because he has hepatitis C, right? That's why it was combustible with the coaxium. As well as hep B. Banner, I made a brief reference while you were gone. There was a scene, like, within the clouds and lightning mm -hmm. of, like, the outline of this asteroid field that really reminded me of a shot from the Godzilla King of Monsters trailer. Have you seen that latest trailer? No. Oh, God, check dude. Check out. it out. It fucking looks awesome. Um... I just put my last beer bottle down. Didn't realize I drank as much beer during this pot as I thought I did. Your last? So now I'm drinking by myself the rest of the time? No, no, no. Like last as in the one that I just finished. Oh, okay. Not the last of the night. Because I'm at five, so I just I have naturally have to make it an even six. So this is – here. Let, can I make a very small complaint that actually as I make the complaint, it's going to get bigger? Yeah. So Star, jump on board. Wars, Star Wars has a dearth, like an excess of great, great planets they've introduced us to. Every over the fucking one is a desert. So, well, no, and, and independent of that, that's a whole different discussion. But they <laughs> have so many great planets. Endor, Coruscant, Naboo, Tatooine, Hoth, uh, Cloud City or Vespin. Like the list goes on and on. Why in these movies... Do we keep going to fucking new places? Let's go back to some of the places I fucking love, Here's man. The thing. You've got Rogue One, for example. First act, some the only thing I don't like about that movie is the first 25 minutes. We're on you're 30 in 30 different, different Yeah, we're on 30 right. different planets. And half of them we've never heard of before. Here's at least half. I don't understand too. Why do we spend so much time on Tatooine? Jakku? Where's Rogue One where where Forrest Whitaker and his fucked up eye live. Well, here's the main question. Why Jedha? I get the Jedha. significance of This Jedha, place. Why didn't they just make Jakku Tatooine? Same fucking concept, right? The, because uh, the rumors of who Rey is are already so fucking rampant. If you put her on Tatooine, it's going to be just heightened. Tenfold. Oh, sorry. 
Real quick, as Han is walking into this place to probably bank Kira. Here's the thing. My Did you last... fuck Han? Would I fuck Han? How many beers have I had? I mean, I've had five. Yes. Okay. Um, Continue with your thought. My last fun fact that I actually skipped, I guess. What? Um, you have a fun fact we're two hours into the movie? The problem is I organize these when I copy and paste them at work. By the way, I'm a teacher, so my kids are losing out on instruction as I do or this. Or they're getting the best education that the country has to offer. Well, I was G-chatting you pretty much the whole day while I was quote-unquote teaching. Um, you so also I normally showed them try and... the movie 300 the other week. <laughs> That's true. Erroneous. I normally try and organize these in what I believe is chronological order. That way I can just go down the list. I don't have to search. But this one has no chronological order because it's just like about the movie in general. But this is the first Star Wars film in official canon that neither mentions the Jedi Order or Jedi Knights, which is kind of interesting. Which when I read that was weird because for some reason I thought Han or Dryden made like an offhanded comment about I, a Jedi. Yeah, I thought one of them said something about the Force – not being real or something like that. Or like Dryden's double-edged like dagger kind of being like a Jedi weapon. For some reason, I thought I remembered that, but obviously I was wrong. Yeah, I, I'm, with, I'm right there with you. This is where Kira's like, hey, we've had a lot of fun, and that was a great fuck on that spaceship, but I know who's coming for us, and it's not going to end well at all. Yeah, look, he's got a double lightsaber dick, and you don't. So naturally, if you were me, who would you pick? So here they just drop off the coaxium. They grab a couple 40s, right? And they're just hanging out waiting for it to be refined. I think so. I'm still a little confused, even after the reveal, how these people are related to the rebellion. Because because the idea of, like, a fuck the Empire, that's not unique. Yeah, you know? I, I, I'm with you. I don't – I respect it, but I don't fucking get it. And maybe I'm just too stupid to get it. Maybe. And I don't – again, I love Star Wars, but I don't know canon like the back of my hand. Like when he sees these dudes outside though, they know like, all right, we have to fuck it. Let's take these shots real quick and then we have to go fight. Yo, Iron Reich's chest is super fucking hairy right now. I don't know if you saw that. I wonder if any of that is makeup added to make – because Harrison Ford's chest is pretty damn hairy in the original. The strap on his gun is like such a cool touch. It is cool. I like – do you like how he – obviously – Hey, was, real quick. Sorry, Banner. Guess which one is Warwick Davis behind this chick? Does it matter? I mean it's the one who's half the size of everyone else. You can't see him. He's right behind Beckett in the shot. Uh, you'll laugh when you do see him now because we're all assholes. We're all going to hell. Yeah, we're all, yeah. There's a special – Guess which one is Warwick Jesus Davis? <laughs> now I can't stop staring at him. I know. Oh God. Uh, uh, this goes back like two hours in the movie. Do you like Dude, how? Hard... Sorry, real quick. They're embarrassed of him too because they keep blocking his <laughs> ass. Beckett. It's not an accident. It's <laughs> it's funny because like you're intimidated because seven guys have guns on them, but then you look at one's either a fucking baby or is that a midget pointing a gun at me? Like no. Like it's six and a half people. They're laughing him every time with Beckett. There he is again. <laughs> We're not laughing because he's small. We're laughing because no one else is. I'm, I'm laughing because he's small. I don't know about you. <coughs> um, oh, my God. So. Because <laughs> Beckett blocking him is not an accident. You know how many fucking, like, directors of photography come in to look at these shots? Dude, and Beckett's not a big dude. No, the camera's like up his asshole. Look at him again. Look at him right there. That was the best shot of the movie. Right there. That was Ice Warwick Davis right there. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> that was good stuff. We're, it's a race to hell on this podcast oh, right now. Fuck. I'm crying, dude. I'm fucking crying. Uh, back to like two yeah. hours ago in the movie. Do you like how Han got his gun, the iconic gun? I do, yeah. I do too. I like that. I think we missed it. I made, made it pee. Like I said, there was a lot of iconic things they had to introduce. Han meeting Lando, Han meeting Chewie, Kessel Run, them finding the Millennium Falcon, him getting his gun. I'm not at all going to include the dice in that because fuck the dice. But you know they can't inherently hit on all of them, you know? Yeah. The card game for the Millennium Falcon is another iconic moment that I actually think works pretty well. It works really well. 
This is the Death Star? No, it's the uh, Red Dawn. Oh, yeah. Send me. Send them. Symbol. Yes. Send them. Symbol. Oh, Crimson Dawn. I guess we've been calling it Red Dawn the whole time. Who gives a shit? The Red problem Dawn. is... Oh, fuck. It is Crimson Dawn. Red Dawn is from uh, the fucking the movie. movie. It's a whole other movie. Yeah. God damn it. With the Wolverines. Here comes Warwick Davis. There's the reveal. <laughs> what, if he, what if when he pulled off his helmet, Han's like, where's the rest of you? And Warwick Davis like just breaks character. Really? <laughs> Fuck him. He's I've been in every the fourth wall. I've been in every Star Wars movie. You're gonna talk to me like that? No. Fuck you, Ron. I'm out. I'm not gonna. Oh my god, dude. This shit's so funny. So is again, if you're listening at home, you know the Bro Force Squads thing is we love fucking movies. We don't pay the closest fucking attention, but sometimes we'll know a really finite detail that we shouldn't. But what planet are we on right now? Obviously not Tatooine because I just saw water. I had no fucking clue. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, it doesn't like we've got Tatooine, we got Jakku, we got that place that Forrest Whitaker's I got fucked up on. Those are the three desert planets, so it's gotta be one of those. Datooing, I think, might be one of them, too. Oh, yeah, that's a problem. We can't have a Tatooine and a Datooine. Shit, someone has a cold. Uh, I went to Datooine. Uh, uh, and this, it sounds like the same fucking thing. Yeah, it's Datooine, but Christopher Walken says it, so now it's Datooine. Datooine. Claire Bear, go to Datooine and not the spaceport. You used to. This is from the trailer. This is a great moment. Yeah, this is a cool moment. This is one of those moments where I'm like, fuck, they showed us everything in the trailer. And then I was like, wow, they didn't show us anything in the trailer. Which honestly should, it's, it's like a skill in and of itself these it days. It really is. I look for shit. I, like, I can watch the Infinity War trailer, great trailer. But I can watch it and already tell you the sequencing of like what act each thing takes place in. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I also read the comic, so in that movie I can tell you what the fuck is going to happen. Yeah. Now, here's the question about Beckett here. Uh, obviously, you know, you've seen the movie. We've spoiled, giving you the spoilers warning several times. His backstab of Han, do you think it's planned or is it just impulsive? Like, he sees an angle to where he could, he could maybe win and he just takes it. See, or is he planning the whole time, Han, I'm sorry, buddy. I actually love, I believe he loves him, but is he like, I gotta fuck you over? See, I think... Great line right here, though. I think again moment where we're not talking because we fucking want to yeah, hear. Yeah, we it. were just we were just watching the movie. I think that, I think that he goes. I don't want to fuck this kid over, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna revert back to what I know best, and that's what's best for me. And I will fuck him over if I need to. Yeah, it's like he, if the he option... sees his shot, he sees his opportunity. There's no other options. He's gonna take his shot. Right. He's like, if my choices are Han and I lose together or Han loses and I win, I mean, that's kind of a no brainer for a guy like Beckett, right? Well, and Beckett's also, I think, a lot like like Han. He's going to he's a survivor. He's going to do what he has to do to survive. And he saw his opportunity to survive. I'm a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to cr- 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 I'm a survivor. <laughs> that was <laughs> That was Chewy replacing one of the other, the not Beyonce Destiny's children. Yeah. Although I think he would have been just as good as part of the Destiny's children's. I'm hammered. I'm fucking can you imagine, hammered. Can you imagine if the band was called Destiny's children's? <laughs> Destiny. I'm, I'm Although hammered. now that you think about it, why is it called Destiny's child? That's like one child. It's there's just one person. There's those. three of them. There's three of those motherfuckers. I don't know. That's a whole that's a whole nother conversation for a regular pod. Subtitles guy gave up. He just wrote Chewy Growls. Yeah, yeah. No yeah, sh- yeah. Psych would be so disappointed right now. Again, Kira with the Q. I don't like it. Why don't you they're just not- spell it with, with a K? But man, they're not gonna start spelling it differently just because we're in the third act. What you if know they what? did? What Let's if- go to that's- the K now. Yeah, that's how much the subtitles dude just doesn't give a shit. I love the fake sympathy. How are you? Are you all right? Would you like some crab cakes? I'd actually love some crab cakes. I would love some crab cakes. What the fuck is that? Was that jello and a hard-boiled egg? 
Yeah, I think it was actually mint mint jelly for some lamb leg. Without the lamb leg. See, here's the thing. If you're Han, dude, read the room. Obviously, Dryden is fucking with you right now. When they get their own ship, he's like, and I'm in the market. I was on Auto Trader yesterday. There's a guy like two miles from here. He only wants 2600 for a 99 Chevy. So I'm going to at least meet up with him. We'll yeah. see if they, I'll kick the tires on it, literally. Again, Paul Bettany works. He's totally fucking working right now. Because he always has felt to me like the type of guy, and maybe this is probably a, this is probably an insult to him in real life, but he seems like the type of guy that could be like totally chill one minute and then like fucking be trying to choke you thirty seconds later. Yeah, he seems like way way too overconfident for me. Ugh. Sorry, folks. Apologize. That was totally on purpose. So, are you done drinking, or what's up? Should I recap this one more time, or what are we doing here? Uh, how much how much movie do we have left? Let me get you a yeah, firm yeah. number on that. I got about 24 minutes. Oh, not yeah. I'm going to get another beer. I'll be back. All right. So you do that. I'll talk, and then we'll we'll tag out real quick. We'll do the last 15 again. By the way, Dryden, real quick, is one button away from being second act in a cheap 80s porno. Banner's really loud with the accessories there. Telling someone you never ask for anything twice is like saying you've never been to a Wendy's drive through Because those motherfuckers, no matter what you order, say that again. Dude, I'm just going to have Destiny's Child stuck in my head the rest of the night. I know, but the only song so far is Survivor. What about this and one? Literally Shwimmer. only that part. Yeah, not doing it for me. Dryden right now looks like he wants someone to take this coaxium and fuck him with it. I was going to say, that's... he's about to take that and shove it up his ass right now, right? So this is the coaxium, huh? All right, let me take this into the restroom for just 10 quick minutes. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Put the game on. It's fine. Geralda will get you anything you want. She's making quesadillas right now. We have some spin dip coming Hold out. On. About I've got five. a question about these quesadillas. Are they just straight cheese or we got a little chicken, maybe some peppers in it? Just cheese. We're making them for like a party of fifty. We don't. Have, we couldn't throw any protein. What kind of what kind of salsa are we looking at? Uh, just a regular one. mild. That's a paste picante sauce. Any sour cream? In. Well, also we will have sour cream on the side. No okay. guac I'm with in. this. But no, nah, you had me at sour cream. I'm in. He's like, what in the absolute fuck is happening? Oh, you're sorry. That I'm about to get butt fucked in jail for the next 25 years, best case scenario. Yeah, yeah, 25 to life, man. All right, Banner, my turn to piss. Yeah, I'll you're, be as quick as I, I got can. you. You you go pee and get another beer while you're at it. Um, this is when this this part of the movie really started to surprise me because all we knew going into this movie was it was about Han doing the Kessel Run. But we didn't know why he was doing the castle run, how he did the castle run. All of these things started to come together, and this is really what made it – really made the movie work for me. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, excuse me. I apologize. These people in the masks and them, them doing their shit. I'm not going to lie. I don't remember this part of the movie. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty drunk right now. Um. Yeah, sorry, folks. If fucking Kira with the Q. I'm watching the movie. I'm not. I'm not actually commenting on anything. I'm. I'm pretty drunk. So, did Paul Bettany get hit in the head? Because it looks like he's a staple in his head. Like, like if he got hit with a bat or something. Um. I don't know. They they got Iron Reich's look right. And Paul Bettany's eyes are freaking me out. The way that they got the red, not only like in the eyeball, but around the edges of it. Like he's a fucked up dude. Has Kira and Paul Bettany fucked? I feel like they have. There's got to be some history there. Like they're exes, but they're still friends. But he doesn't want to be friends. He wants uh, to be more than friends. It was 69. I don't know what Hornacek is talking about over there. Something about 69ing people. That's weird. See, this is a total fucking Han Solo move. Like, just 
doing what's unpredictable because it's predictable. And then this bitch, I don't know, what's this chick in? The Hornet's is sitting down right now. Hold on. What's the what's this chick in? Oh shit. Yeah, what's this what's, chick in? Which chick? The freckle. Yeah, the freckle face chick. I've never seen her in anything. She looks so familiar though, right? Uh, I mean, I, I could look it up. This is what, when people are listening at home, they're like, oh my God, that's fucking so-and-so from... Because so I do that when I listen to podcasts. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm also pretty like, drunk right now. Yeah, I'm very drunk. That's pretty much the entire time you're peeing, I just told them how drunk I was. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't talk about was, the movie. <laughs> all right, let me see if I can even guess this actress based on the cast. She's in something, I feel like. Erin Kellyman. Okay. Oh, she's, yeah. She's in Les Mis. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not what I've seen her from because I fell asleep that's, in that movie. That's all you've seen her in, yeah. Yeah, I fell oh, asleep. Oh, no, sorry. She's in a new version of Les Mis in 2018, so probably so not. So I definitely haven't seen that. You definitely lied. Um, this this part right here while you were gone, basically, this is another really Han thing to do. He does the unpredictable by doing what's so predictable. Yeah, because you're like, there's no way you would play it by the book. Right. I love to see... I love this scene because the, the double-edged daggers, they're literally tickling our dicks with a Darth Maul reference. I know. Here's the thing. Did you see the Darth Maul coming? Hell okay. not even a little bit, did I? No, but here, here's the thing, Mater. I got to say this. I This is what really pissed me off. I think I might have said this on the review. I saw this movie with our legal counsel, Ronnie Cycli, on the Thursday night that it came out at 8 p.m., the second possible showing you could see ever. I'm in the bathroom taking a piss beforehand, and some fucking 14-year-old goes, man, Maul, can you believe that? Wait, the first showing was I over already? I, that's what I'm saying. I, or maybe he heard from someone else. Dude, the double daggers to, right here. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt this, you. No, but this the way, the way that he's, like, slicing and it's leaving the little, like, sparks on the ground, that shit is getting me going, man. I love the way this is filmed, too. Yeah. The fucking, it looks like brass knucks the way he holds yeah, it, too. Yeah, dude, I would sick. totally, honestly, I kind of want to be in for Halloween right now. At the beginning, I don't know if you guys talked about this. At the beginning of this show, I was wearing a shark costume. Yeah, you were. We did talk about that. And I was you so know, crazy. fucking I'm so drunk now, I almost forgot that Geiger was on this commentary for a little bit. Then we lost him. Oh, yeah. Was Cycli on it? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not going to lie, I'm pretty drunk that I kind of thought he was <laughs> as well. In a weird way, Han's like, I would kind of be aroused, Kira, if you stabbed me right now. I feel like it would be poetic, like a Romeo and Juliet if he did. Kira just raised her arms and my thing like started loading, but it's fucking fine. She kills Voss, right? That's what happens. I'm pretty sure she does. This fight scene between Voss and her is, it's very short, but it's pretty fucking badass. Basically, his little brass knuckle things get stuck on her sword. I apologize to fans. I keep burping, and I can't help it. You've been doing it on purpose into the microphone. I, I really have it. But they get st it gets stuck on her sword, and then she uses her sword to stab him with the, the dagger thing. Really creative. Yeah, I'm going to be pretty far behind you. I'm just trying. Once my thing reloads, I'll Do try we to wanna, catch Here, up. we can pause it. No, I load it again. It's like I'm back up. She just stabbed Voss. I know I'm like a few seconds All behind All right, here, you. I'll... Oh, we're good. We're good. We're going to pause for a minute. She's talking to Han right now. And they okay, literally, right. they're kissing. Tell me when they start to kiss. If you're at home, yeah, pause it for a second with yeah. us. This is great because now it's like an interactive movie. Yeah. Come. We're at one hour, 56 minutes, and three seconds. Henrik, I know I'm only talking to you, buddy. Fucking pause it for like two seconds. Honestly, right now, if any of our fans would listen to us, it's Henrik because Henrik's awesome. Henrik's the fucking man, dude. He's, he's the fucking shit. He's basically the fifth member of the pod. More All or right, less. They're, they're, they're kissing now. Playing. Probably playing. with tongue, I'm guessing. I mean, would you kiss Khaleesi without tongue? I would have her tell me that's too much tongue. Until she does that, we're just going to keep adding tongue to it. Is it, it? It's really turning me off that she goes, go save Chewie. Like, she knows yeah, what's up. It's, it's weird to have a chick that you want to be inside of just say the word Chewbacca. Right? Although this is like, we'll talk real movie moment for a second. This is a tough fucking time for her. 
It really is. And again, this is kind of why I want a sequel to know like what she was up against, why she had to do this, because obviously the stakes for her were too high. Let me ask you to this. follow. Would you rather a sequel where we learn more, or would you rather a prequel of how she got in this situation to begin with? The reason I would say – that's a great question. The reason I would say sequel is because I think I want I want more of Ayn Rank as Han, even more if it's just to give me a bigger sample size and let me make a judgment on that. And also I think this story has a lot of momentum at the end of it. Like one of, the big, one of the big pluses is like I'm excited to see what happens next, even though I kind of know where the end game is on Tatooine. Obviously he owes – there's a debt to Jabba. I'm I, like, I want to see what happens to these characters in the next six months. Well, and not only that, spoilers if you haven't seen Rebels, but you know that uh, Obi Wan eventually ends up killing. Um, he finishes oh. his job with. This is the so scene. right here. Did you even know that it was him at this point? No, definitely okay. not. I did, which I was like, I literally turned to my wife and I go, "Fuck yeah." Ah. Uh. Uh. And I love, and it hasn't happened yet, obviously, but the gratuitous double lightsaber open because we just need There's it. There's no as fans. point where you have to have it. That was that was Howard. I read adding that. It was I'm like, pretty sure the I stood up and started clapping. And they're like, "Why would he turn the lightsaber on?" And he's like, "Cause fans fucking want to see the double edged lightsaber." So this is more dialogue than he had in the entire movie of Phantom Menace, right? Yes, it actually did. Is it, it the same it. actor? Or is it a different actor? Ray Park came back, who plays Toad. So was it was it Benicio del Toro who was originally supposed to play uh, Darth Maul? Yes, and then he left the role because his dialogue kept getting trimmed down, and then they almost made it nothing after he left. Like if he was in the role, they would have given they him more. Given and him. I love the double edged fucking lightsaber. Yeah, it would just come a little, but Kira with the Q, it's still killing me. I'm sorry, I can't get over it. So a lot of people are like, oh, why did he fucking turn it on? And here's my thing. If you're complaining about Darth Maul activating the double-edged lightsaber, don't watch a Star Wars movie. All right? Rogue One is the only one that didn't have a light. Oh, never mind. I forgot about the badass scene at the end with Darth Vader. Who? And Rogue One at the end where he just fucks everybody up on uh... – Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, like, if you complain about stuff like that, then don't watch the movie, dude, because then you're – this is a great scene. Yeah, Bradley Taylor. How do you double-cross a double-crosser? Han Solo is kind of like Johnny Depp's uh, Jack Sparrow. He's honest. Honestly, it's the honest people that you have to worry about. That's true. Still love the gun. Oh, I, I love it. Do you like your Han shot first? Do you like that they brought that back and they made it a thing? I really do, actually. I love it. Well, I would say this. Subtext, this basically answers the fucking question, right? I mean, yeah. this is like a precursor to, yeah, he shot Greedo yeah. first. Of course he shot first. And the thing I love about Beckett is he's like, damn, I really respect that. I would have shot me too. Yeah. Woody Harrelson just killed it. I'm pretty sure in the review, we said Woody Harrelson was basically white men can't jump Woody Harrelson. I am actually going back on that. I don't agree with that anymore. What was the last role that we didn't like Woody Harrelson in? I mean, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. We you killed guys fuck. Yeah, I haven't seen it. You him. fucking loved him, man. Yeah, I mean, everything him. else. I've I don't know. Uh, he, I, would, I didn't like him in the Hunger Games, personally. He played Hamish in the Hunger Hunger Games. Yeah, I wasn't a I fan of that, fan. but really, but other than that, I don't know of anything I didn't like Woody Harrelson in. So here's my thing with the fucking dice, man. So they're a big deal we're between back him on and the dice. Yeah, we're back on the dice. It's a big deal between him and Kira, and then all of a sudden, 15 movies later and 80, 82 years later, it's a big deal between him and Leia. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Sense. I mean, I guarantee you Leia didn't know about Kira because she would have been like, who the fuck is this? Right. Like, what? Why is she? A and, you know, that's a conversation me? Han's not going to have. She sounds like a slut. And he's like, well, Leia, I don't really. She wasn't. Yeah. I mean, we had a five year committed relationship, but whatever. Sure. I she think I love Darth Maul and Paul Bettany, but it is what it is. 
think I've lost the remote to my Fire Stick, but that's future Hornacek's problem. Yeah, really. I don't understand the problem. <clears throat> Whatever this planet is at night, man, you give me a couple fucking margaritas and a hammock, I could, we could do this. Yeah, I'm down. Dude, you could definitely retire to this planet. That guy looks like, oh my god, Warwick Davis is still a midget. That <laughs> guy looks like Plo Koon. He does. Of. I think he's Plo Koon's cousin. Like, Are these, like, full of Coronas, or are these the Coaxium? What's Chewie bringing them right I now? I think it's one of each, honestly. <laughs> He's like, all right, one of these is coaxial and one of these is Coronas. I hope you get it right. Yeah, guess. Which one would you even want? Honestly, if I said there was I'm not going to lie to you. Corona, I said one of these has 36 Corona extras. The other has four whatever units of coaxium. Which one would you rather get? Let's be honest. I'm going for the Coronas, and I don't even like Corona. Yeah. You're trying to look at his arms because the Coronas are probably lighter they've, than the coaxium. They've got to be lighter. Quaxium's density is got to be like, I don't know, really heavy. See, so like if you're recruiting for the rebellion, number one, who the fuck are you? And number two, why do you dress like that? Number three, this is not that far. Like when a new hope starts, the rebellion seat feels like it's been a thing forever. See, and that's that's where earlier I was talking about continuity and, and chronological order. This has got to be before Rebels, and it's got to be before Rogue One. But how far before, I don't know. I don't think it's much before Rebels, because Darth Maul in Rebels like looks younger in the originals. Like him and his brother, when they show up, he looks younger than he does right here. Well, and his brother is, is actually in Clone Wars as well. This scene is fucking cool. We're in there in the jungle playing Sabacc again. I yes, dig again. this. What's this planet? Is this the planet where who's the chick in Revenge of the Sith, the Jedi with the pink Ahsoka Tana? Is she the one who gets killed in that scene? Uh, Ahsoka Tana's not dead. She ends up in Clone Wars. This this might be Felucia. What kind of punch was that? Like, what do you? I don't know. You know what's weird? Hmm. When we would go back and rewatch this, Lando's part was actually a lot smaller than I remembered. I think because I thought he just crushed his part other than the whole fucking a robot thing. I think he did really well. And I think that's why we liked him so much. He was definitely a standout to me. For sure. I love seeing all the shit people have thrown in. Yeah. A couple vape, couple vape pens, a vibrator, a fucking <laughs> USB. Who knows what's on that USB? Yeah, Could be knows? porn. Could be porn, could just be word docs. Yeah. You're the one gambling, so that's up to you. Yeah. I feel like that's a real gamble. Is What what do you think this USB is worth? Chewie obviously Chewie is so stoned right now, he has no idea what Han just showed him. The, the reaction he just made is like, I'm too fucking high to even read what's on those cards. Yeah, that's like, I'm just going to make a reaction and hope it goes along with what you need me to do. Chewie's like trying to order French fries. Like we don't have a fucking kitchen here. It's only a bar. We don't have mozzarella sticks either. God damn it! What about some onion rings? Okay, those we have. Wait, wait what? I'll take. I'll take. I'll take two orders of onion rings. And can I get four ketchups with that? We're not gonna bring you ketchup with your onion rings. Who? Who? Do you know what fucks? The zesty sauce at Burger King. Oh, hell yeah. Now, Han did the shit with the extra card, right? Right. So, this is where Han actually gets the Millennium Falcon, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And now we see it without the little front thing. Yeah, so I, I don't I don't really know what this is. Is it maybe like X Wing, like in attack foils, out of attack foils? <coughs> maybe. So because that's the only just time. Had a reference to Jabba right there, right? Yeah, they're going to Tatooine. They're going Beckett to Tatooine. So this is probably six months to a year. God, fuck the dice. I was gonna say last shot is the dice, really. Um, that was solo. A Star Wars movie. I almost forgot what fucking movie we were watching. That's how hammered I am. Yeah. Um, they gave Lord and Miller EP credits. That's and kind of they're both... Uh, yeah, that's insane. Are they on screenplay or no? They took them off. It looked like just the cast. Yeah, I think they were just on... 
I don't think they were on anything else. Um, Geiger, any last thoughts? Oh, Geiger's not here, I guess. Oh, man. All right. Cycle, uh, fucking, cycling. any thoughts on the movie in general? You just, I guess the two people on the pod that aren't fucking me, I'm the only one here. I'm the only one in the fucking foxhole with you, bruh. <laughs> fucking smashed. And the worst part, what makes it more offensive, I don't think it was an accident. Or I don't think it was on purpose, I mean. I think it was an accident. I, I am smashed right now, Horns. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's like a fucking Tuesday night. It's a Wednesday. Uh, yeah, that's what I said. Uh, Horns, any last thoughts on Solo, a Star Wars movie? Star Wars so story. This this movie, uh, I like it a lot, man. Uh, if you ask me to rank it in terms of Star Wars movies, uh, I'd probably go fifth behind the original trilogy in Rogue One. Um, wow. Actually, this and Force Awakens are pretty close. I was maybe say, I think I put it behind Force Awakens. Yeah, maybe it's six, but just but, barely. But honestly, of the five ahead of it, I'd say three of them, maybe four, are for sure in my top one hundred movies of all time. So oh, I really enjoy the movie. Movies. What? Uh, some guy named Alistair Bullock, which I'm pretty sure is related to Sandra Bullock, was credited. Yeah, for sure. Why would two people ever have the same last name? La thing I'll leave with is this was a very, very pleasant surprise for me, um, especially considering the production issues it had. And I just fucking love Star Wars, dude. I love this universe. I love being in it. I hope that we keep getting decent movies. The Last Jedi, I think, just took a lot of narrative risk that didn't need to, and it kind of upset me. And I don't want to be a pretentious fan because it's the only Star Wars movie I've ever not loved. But this got me back in love with Star Wars. I'm just worried we're getting too many of them too soon. But I loved Iron Reich. Just didn't see him as Han Solo. But overall, this is why you go to the movies, man. Have fun like this. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I echo everything you said. I was pleasantly surprised. I really thought this movie was going to suck. Uh, from the beginning, as soon as it got announced, I did not want to see this movie. I did not want to learn Han's origin. Now that we know some of where Han comes from, Excuse me. I'm not mad about it. Yeah. I, I they, enjoyed it. Again, I didn't think Iron Reich did that great of a job, but everything else was so well done that it kind of overshadowed that, and especially watching this for the second, third, fourth time. Yeah, dude, I enjoyed it. If it comes on FX, I'm totally watching it till the end. Yeah. And again, a lot of the things they had to show us uh, in terms of the narrative, like what was asked in Han Solo's backstory, a lot of pressure. They're iconic moments. And I think the majority of them, they hit out of the park. So I'm really, really glad that Ron Howard took over this because you could tell that the movie was directed and completed by a someone who loves Star Wars, the has, fuck they rever were doing. Reverence, yeah, has reverence for it. And on top of it all, it's just a great fucking filmmaker. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I think uh, all four members that were on this pod tonight can really echo everything that we just said. Oh my god, you are so drunk. I'm but hammered. yeah, sure. Um, let's just see if I can get this right. Guys, we have been the Bro4 Squad podcast. You can check us out www.bro4squad.com. Give us a like on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Bro4 Squad. Um, subscribe to us on iTunes and on YouTube. Leave us a comment and or a review. We will definitely mention you on one of our Many media that we put out. Go ahead and read the squad blog on broforsquad.com. For Jeff the Mayor Hornacek, Matt the Enforcer, F. Geiger, Ronnie Cycle, even though he was only here as a force ghost, go ahead and uh, we're going to shout out to him too. I am Brian the Mad Scientist Banner. We'll check you guys out next time. Dude, I'm fucking I, smashed. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I missed the force ghost thing. We did that on, I think, Jedi. Yeah, I'm just hammered. And even not being here, he still acted better than Hayden Christensen, so that's very true.